three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Races. And tonight we have sitting next to me, Christian Nidden. How the devil are you, sir? I am very well, thank you. And opposite, our guest for this evening and the year's roundup, I can't believe it's the end of this season already, the man that proves the Scottish accent can be sexy, Duncan Vincent. How the devil are you, sir? I'm good, thanks. It's great to be here. I'm, I'm actually really nervous. I'm, I have to put it out there. I'm, I'm sitting in front of two guys who are pretty good at what they do here. Well, we, we were kind of hoping... <laughs> what? You, you, what? Talk, you talk for a living, so yeah. we kind of thought we were just... That was us done now, I think, I, I, isn't it? I know, but... That's, that's pretty much it. I normally oh, interview you. You know, yeah. this is this is completely different from me. I'm, I'm very good at asking questions and letting you speak about yourself. And I, when I have to speak about myself or say something, I usually think I've spoke for too long and I need to stop speaking and I've said nothing meaningful, so... No, you're all be nice. You, you crack on. You, be nice. No, this is this it. Is, this is the Duncan episode. You've got to fill. Now, Grace, God love it, is going to edit this tonight, so she's away on holiday. So, like, we've got the Get end. New of... teeth, apparently. <laughs> and here, like, oh, mate, yeah, I tell you what, for all our listeners, if you were in the room five minutes ago, Grace Rouse nearly threw a first slap. It was going to be absolutely <laughs> glorious. I did start winding up. <laughs> you got to be done. It's got to be done. But uh, no. <laughs> all I'm thinking about is just Grace's anger towards you now. No, it's all good. Tongue in cheek on this show. 100 said but where do we go from here gentlemen it is the end of the season mm. that is just no. absolutely bewildering how quick is that gone well is this the home correct me and this is right now this is horrible to say this oh, in the no. same breath oh let me get me tongue out your ass for a second but no no, you've no, been no, no. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> you've been that good at your jobs it feels like you've been here for a long long time but this is actually your first year in british second is that correct? second sec- second year is it yeah, no. me. Yeah, well, <laughs> I always see you at Knock Hill. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, second full year, second full year, because last year was the first full year year before that. So this. you oh are basically yeah, yeah, Fred's yeah. replacement. Oh, well, yeah. When Fred retired, uh, I was um, yeah. I was big boots to fill. Yeah, absolutely. But I was never going to do it like Fred, you know. Uh, and I was kind of given the mission statement to to kind of not do it like that, mm-hmm. to kind of change it and and and. and try and be different so yeah second year and uh, I mean I've got the greatest job in the world you know I'm I'm really lucky I don't have the pressure of racing anymore I miss racing massively uh, and what you do is a way above the level I was ever at and you as well Dom I'd like to point that out <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no 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 let's move on from there <laughs> but, I, mean, I, I mean I've got the greatest job in the world I get to talk about every single class I get to talk about every single lap from a Friday right through to a Sunday and then I get to drive back up the road or fly back up the road and it's fresh in my mind until I get to round about Glasgow and, and the journey's over in a heartbeat for me even if it's six, seven hours it's over in a heartbeat because you're reliving the whole weekend and everything that happened and you know I, I'll live every lap that you guys live as well so it's, well, it's quality I never actually realised you were you raced yourself mm-hmm. yeah so I'm on. sitting here looking yeah, at the same that was, that was completely okay. new to me <clears throat> ah, I see it yeah so let's have it Okay. Uh, well, I start. Uh, uh, which, which, which track have you raced at the most? Uh, <laughs> the one that's north of Edinburgh, <laughs> not Kill. I started racing carts when I was 13 years old with my dad, just starting a lad in a van, and we'd nip along to our local circuit at Creel. And it was just good fun, a little 100cc car, and it was never going to go anywhere. We didn't have any money, and we didn't really know what we were doing. And I seized a lot of two-stroke engines when I used to try and lean the mixture off to go faster, and, you know, one of these things. You learn from your mistakes. Went car racing when I was 17 years old in Fiestas, uh, through Fiesta racing, into Formula Ford racing. I've raced a Radical SR3 in Europe and, and all over the place. Uh, it's great fun. He's um, literally downplayed this from like leaning off two strokes with your dad yeah. to hold on, we're going into Europe Straight now. into Europe yeah. on Radicals. Yeah. 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 You just make it sound like we should have done that. I know, but, like, oh. you know, it's like, you know, but Christian Eddins a British super big racer who's like, Way up there, and Tom Herbertson's a BMW F nine hundred all the way down there. Way up there as well. So, <laughs> from, from but I've I always had an interest in bike racing. Always had an interest in bike racing. And um, when my dad and myself were racing, he always asked me never to get involved in, in bikes. You know, he lost a lot of friends in, in bike racing. So unfortunately, I lost my dad when I was twenty one years old. Right, right. So, and I just always I always had this itch that needed to scratch. So I bought a little RVF four hundred which was my favourite motorbike ever, little NC35. Mm-hmm. And I raced that in uh, the Cooper Motorcycles, there's a plug for you, uh, 400cc Productions class, which was a controlled tyre wet and dry. And I did all right in that, actually. I got top 10, I got best rookie, best novice to the Kirkcaldian District Motorcycle Club, as it was back then. 
onto a 600, onto an R6, when everybody was riding the new Hondas with under seat exhaust. So. And how long ago is this, sorry? Well, what we're talking 2000 and when I first, I think I stopped racing bikes, 2010, 2011. Right, not long um, ago then. Yeah, so I mean, went through 600s onto super stock 1000 and, and did all right. Represented Scotland at the match races and a couple of years running and yeah, just had good fun. I was never that good though, you know, I was never that fast. I was, I was stable. Um, and I didn't throw it up the road too often, um, but when I did, it did. Um, but you, but you went from cars yeah, straight bikes. into bikes. But yeah. Did you have any like? Did you ride bikes on the road, or did you have? No, your... I don't have a road license. No, I could ride a bike because I had a motocross bike. So you literally just decided bikes. you were going to go from car yeah. racing into yeah, hundred percent. And how was that transition? Because <laughs> it's quite a different concept. Well, it was okay, but I, I, the first thing I ever done was at Knockhill. It was a Neil McKenzie track day school. And Bob Grant gave me a 400cc <coughs> FCR 400 to, to ride around the mountain. My instructor was a guy called Ian Campbell, who was a British super sport racer back in the day for V&M. And a, a good, good guy, Ian Campbell. And I remember sitting in the classroom thinking, what the hell am I doing? You know, what, what happens if I can't do this? I had the briefing, out onto the track and got to the first corner and thought, whoa, yeah, OK, that's that's fine. It leans that way, leans that way. And, and I thought, you know, I'm doing OK. And I thought I was giving it absolutely everything, which I wasn't. As we came through the chicane and he looked over his shoulder and he gave me a thumbs up and I thought, well, I'm miles away from where I need to be. But that was that was kind of towing the water stuff and just it went from there. And then I, I was still kind of race cars as well. So it's I kind of keep myself involved. Um, but yeah, you didn't know that, did you? That's quite I cool. genuinely didn't you know didn't that. Know. No, it's like cool. That. It's very cool. cool. My God, like, that's, <laughs> so did your dad, like, uh, you know what's interesting, like, so did your dad race? No, no, dad, didn't dad race never raced, no, never raced, no. So I'm, I, I must touch, so was it solely because your dad lost friends on motorcycles? Yeah, yeah, more or less, yeah, he was, um, he, um, he grew up, well, he never grew up, but he was involved with sidecar racers, never grew up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like that. Uh, he was involved with uh, sidecar racers and uh, he, he, he was just around when, when things went wrong with certain people he knew and things like that, so he just asked me never, never to get involved in it and... So, it was, and, and what did I do? I got involved. That, that's what I mean. Normally, you know, bloody hell, 21's a, like, it, no, no uh, family member should ever lose another family yeah. member. That's the way of life. But 21's a young age to yeah. lose your dad, mate. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was hard, but you know, it was, um, obviously a very strong family around my sister, my mum and, and various other people in the family. And, uh, and yeah, and bike racing was just, it's where I went for, from there on. I was wholly devoted to it and uh, I really enjoyed it. Best bike I ever raced, best bike I ever rode was my Superstock Fireblade, 2006 oh. Fireblade. So we've gone for 400 straight away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, it's a bit like his car yeah. career. <laughs> <laughs> a rapid you know, progression. I, I, I can't believe the amount of crack you fast forward. You really don't you like talking about yourself, do you? You, no, know what, you no. literally fast forward a huge career <laughs> there within. Yeah, so I love bikes. No, yeah, yeah. The FZR 400 was the AM session and <laughs> the Blade was in the PM. <laughs> Not quite, I wish, but you know. I mean, you you ridden the Fireblade, have you not? You, you raced the yep, Fireblade, yeah, yeah. yeah. The black black swing and arm under seat exhaust, the last before we went to the the next generation of Fireblade, and I wish I would never sold that, and I wish I would never sold my four hundred. But you know, at that time you're a club racer, you sell one bike to fund the next one. I tell you what, there's there's the thing. We don't get many car races in here. I don't oh, think, sorry, I'm trying to think who we've. You may be the first. I think strike me down if I'm wrong, but. Wow. Let's talk about the separation of the paddock. All right, okay. Car paddock or bike paddock? Which one do you prefer? Wow. Now you are in BSB company. He's going to be very careful with. Got to watch what I say here because I know that Christian's got a good friend of mine called Dan Clark, who I'm good friends with, who's <laughs> who's in a paddock that, that I'm in. He races legends, so uh, Dan, Daniel like, Daniel Clark. He's a North East lad, isn't he? Yes, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's car, car yeah, racer. Yeah. yeah. Is that where he's from? Aye. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice guy. Um, car. What's the better paddock? In fact, to be I think in? I think we've got. Uh, he's doing a karting. Yes, thing in a few weeks at Rowra. Yeah, I'm a motorcycle. Life, I did so it. A few, I did it a few weeks. Armor. I think so. Oh. Is, is I did it a few years ago. I turned up. I thought I'm going to. I'm going to absolutely blitz all these carters, and it was wet. And I could not stay on the track one little bit. And I did that typical <laughs> thing where every time I went off track, I thought, well, I'll make it all back up in the very next corner. So I just. I spent more time off track than I did. I, I spent more time lifting it out of the flipping bark because they don't have gravel at Rowley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did driving round, but I couldn't turn the thing. Ah, well, it no. was quite impressive. The it's, skill a skill. Got. it's a skill involved. Yeah. You have to come to the Benich, like go kart day. Fun. I'd was... like to be invited to that actually. No, oh, sorry. I mean, now I'm fun. slipping here, but it's, uh... I kind of managed to dodge that paddock question, haven't I? Kind of skiff. Now we'll no, go, no, back, no, to go back to that. Right. Know, yeah. <laughs> again, back to it. Don't you worry about that. But no, you have to come to that because I got invited. Well, me, Grace, and like all the co-hosts got invited down and people have turned up with their he turned up he's sponsored by alpine star so he turned oh, up like you know the bells and the whistles <laughs> if you've got yeah. a cow you've got to milk it haven't you yeah. like, you can't flip in 
all the gear, no idea. If you can get some free Alpine <laughs> Stars kit and look professional. Yeah. Christian, I've never ever wanted to see someone be more shit at something <laughs> in my life. I'm like, that go please be shit at this. Christian, because you, you just when, looked you looked when, fast. <laughs> when you're talking about somebody with free gear, I mean just you know, look you know fully OMG the, the, up. The, okay, the OMG jacket we'll explain later on towards yeah. the latter end of the show because we can't afford stickers. But anyway, we'll go <laughs> that we'll go <laughs> But we can't afford hoodies. It's a, it's a bit of a weird but one. But yeah, no, that bit that Bennett's like go kart event, that is proper cool. And seeing as you've got a, a real pedigree. I think we'd need to put your name forward as one of the... A real pedigree. One of the pros. I'd, I'd be in a funny noise. Do you know what? Here, it's, it's, it's quite amazing how, like, we get paired up, so you get your, your racer gets paired up with two or three Bennett's customers. Mm -hmm. That's quite amazing how much hatred I have when I get a bad Bennett's customer. Oh, really? I don't mean, really? I don't mean bad as in they're a nasty person. They're all lovely. I mean, when they drive slowly, yeah. I want to just, just kill bring them. Just bring them in. Bring them yeah. in. Change swap. That's... Yeah. I know what you mean. How can you be 10 seconds off yeah. the pace for f sake? <laughs> Be it's nice, a go kart. You go nice flat out customer, everywhere. Christian. Be nice to the customer. I'm yeah, not sure if Green yeah. should edit that out or not. I love that. It's like that gun. Um, only get insurance through Bennett's if you're fast. If you're fast <laughs> yeah. And if you're not fast in the cart, don't go. <laughs> we had, I had one I, guy I, and he pulled in because he thought he went, oh, I thought they flagged me in, but it wasn't him. I lost my shit with him. <laughs> we went from first to last. <laughs> you're ultra competitive, aren't you? Well, I just... Aren't we all? I, I just quite like to win. Which is frustrating for me at the moment. Oh, that race has been a, been a bad time there, hasn't it? Oh, I love that. He's leaning. Well, exactly. So when I can't win at the Bennett's flipping go-kart day. <laughs> Something's going wrong. Yeah, yeah okay. times are hard. Anyway, which paddock is the friendliest? Um, by f oh, no, no. Yeah, is that not what you friend, No, no, what no, 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 friend, no, no. Just which paddock's the best? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, There's always segregations between the road race and paddock, the BSB paddock, club race and paddock. You know what I mean? Is that kind of the same in cars? Well, or I, Look... I've never been in the car paddock. The closest I've ever been to is Macau. They put us in separate hotels, man. They put yeah, the yeah. car lot and the bike lot okay. in total different. And you just all seem different money. It's definitely different money. But yeah. what, what I've heard, I don't know, I, from the few car people that I know and people that I know that have worked in cars, <clears throat> what I hear is that there's much less respect between the drivers than there is between riders. So you can right me right. or wrong me on that. Which supposedly stems from and i've had this explained to me from a couple of different sources separately is because there's less of a danger element in the cars so you don't need the same personal yeah, okay. respect you do in the bike i see what you mean there, that's yeah. what i've been told yeah, yeah i've you're, never done both paddocks so you're know. probably right i mean i, I mean i'm lucky i, I kind of just try and be everybody's friend i kind of try and get on with everybody but the, the car car world's different from the bike world you know it is different yeah. but the, the car world that I'm involved in, the clubby side of things, is very much great camaraderie. The local yeah. club scene, that, you know, it's, it's basically what you would have at your normal clubby bike race. And, you know, mm. somebody blows an engine up, somebody's got something that can help them fix it. Somebody bashes the car, somebody's got it there. But the more up level you go when you get to possibly high-end saloon cars, which is, a the, you know, the Touring Car Championship, that's when it's a lot more, there's money at stake, there's big sponsors, <laughs> there's big corporate people involved in it. And so it, it has to be different, you know. It's got to be a little bit different because there's, if your if you're rival has got a problem you're not going to go and really probably try and help them mm. it's, it's a li little bit different so so which one did you prefer being in yeah good question yeah. i love the bikes i'm just trying to geek that question out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, i know so. we're getting it we're I, getting I love the bikes i mean yeah. I, where i am right now is perfect for me it's great you know I, i'm i'm still i'm still learning jesus you know i'm still learning people in the paddock and, the, mm -hmm. and, and, and i'm still learning people in your garage you know, I come down and I try and get Christian out for an interview. And he kind of just looks at me and just kind of stares at me and then looks away. <laughs> I say, like, okay, I'll be able to go, we'll come back. But that's after a session, you know, you've been busy, you've got a debrief to do, I understand that. But um, I like the bike paddock. I like where I am just now. You know, I get to talk about the best bike race and people say the best bike race, best domestic bike racing in the world. And I agree with that, you know, the BSB's <clears throat> some point. When that last meeting at Brands Hatch, I was shaking the commentary box, you know, when trying to, trying to talk about it. And you're probably shaking as well because you're a bit of a... But we're not talking about that. But you know, I was like that. That last race, it was like it was all about these three guys at the front, and they seemed to just, they seemed to just raise it. They seemed to, for some reason, bring it and, and take it on there. Mm. And, and I'm getting to stand there and talk about that in front of the packed, packed grandstands at the Brands Hatch, and everybody else who's listening via the commentary for BSB Radio, uh, presented by Kawasaki K Options. <laughs> not on this show, so. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that won't make it to where you are. Never even happened. That's gone. That's gone. But you know, I'm lucky, and, and also back back to my little bit of racing that I've done. I think I'm lucky because 
I don't speak at it from just a commentator's point of view. I can speak at it like I've, 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 I have done it to not the level you've you guys have done it. To. Yeah, but that's irrelevant, isn't yeah. it? I think. But you I know, think if you've if you've done it, you've done it. The, 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 totally the level doesn't actually matter. I don't think. I completely agree. And the mad thing is, we're both sitting here equally in shock, going, "You raced." Yeah. And that's nothing. But that's, that's given me an added uh, respect, almost in a way, because oh, wow. because well, because you do have that inside knowledge. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like, no, when, thank if you. you've raced, you've raced. Yeah, no matter what level I. I think. miss it. God, I miss it. You know, I, I right. eventually stopped racing bikes. Um, a wee boy guy who's now fifteen and six foot tall. Guy was so it'd be ten years ago. Uh, I stopped racing bikes actually because guy was five going on six. Right. So does the maths add up with that? Because I'm never the greatest. Don't ask yeah. me. <laughs> but so, um, so I stopped racing that. Yeah, and the last bike I raced was a six hundred Kawasaki. So we went up from the thousand and back to six hundred Super Sport and. Yeah, it's great. Crap. And it was just because you had a, a growing family. Yeah, and... a growing family. <laughs> uh, but Guy knew what I did, and I didn't want Guy to get involved. And I really, you know, yeah, I didn't want him to get involved in it. We bought a PW50 so I could teach him how to at least ride a bike. Uh, bought it from Ian Bell, the great Ian Bell. Drove oh, down, yeah. picked up from Ian. It was a great day. Spent a bit of time with Ian, drove back up. Taught Guy how to ride a PW50, and he kind of got out of his system quite early. He, he prefers football, golf, and going to the gym. The money yeah. sport. And I'll, I'll buy him as many pairs of football boots as he wants. If he wants to just do that, that's fine mm. with me. And golf clubs. But that must be, that. that's that's quite bizarre. No, no, no. Like, I'm saying that from our point of view. You know, we're all race and stuff yeah. like that. But then your job is very much involved in this world. You know, like, and yeah. he's just kind of weird out of that. It's, it's and, interesting. And obviously also, you ha- your dad had his reasonings for you not wanting to do bikes. Do you have, I suppose my reasons what's your the, feeling? Yeah, I suppose my reasons are the same as my dad's, to be honest. Yeah, fair right. You know, we're all sitting here and, you know... It's just, you know, it's a difficult one to say because you never want somebody to stop doing something that they want to do. But he actively wasn't that bothered, yeah. so, so it was easier know, for you. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, much. Yeah. As, it wasn't a case of saying you're not doing that. Yeah. It was a case of like you know. Whoa. I, I must ask: in many, 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 many moons from now, and yeah. you meet your dad on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> dad, punch me right in the yeah, nose. I, you, know I, that? you know what I mean? I'm just like, I could just yeah. get mad, like, what did I tell you? <laughs> you Jesus, know? Webb, I can only imagine it. But I think he said, my God, you're actually quite fast. I'm quite surprised, you know? Nah, we're getting it out of him now, <laughs> Christian. You know what I mean? We're getting it out of him now. Yeah, I was yeah. actually pretty shit yeah. off, you know what I mean? Well, you know, I mean, you guys lap my local circuit, not kill 40, what, tell me. What is it? I can't remember, is it 46, 47? I can't remember. Uh, for, yeah, on a, on a super bike. So, like 10 years, I mean, that, that's that's uber fast. I was nowhere ever near that. The best I ever got down to on my super stock thousand was like a, a mid low 52 second lap, and I was I was delayed with that. It's a long time ago, but I mean, you guys are like n- another league. You know, you're probably, you'd be probably doing your BMW if you arrived in town now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm not, did they do a reverse course direction still at Knockout? Yeah, oh, yeah, I rode yeah. it the other day. What? What did you? I rode it at the. Um, I was convinced that was clockwise, though. No, what was that? Ducati? Oh, Ducati Scottish, oh yeah. Scottish Ducati week. We were there together, weren't we? Mm-hmm. It wasn't just the other day, though. That was, well, oh, it was similar to this. Feels like the other day, yeah. Yeah. This is Reverse direction's great, isn't it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was about, yeah, that was going to be my suggestion. Ooh. Now, I think for BSB fans everywhere, One Direction on Saturday, Ooh. and then you've got, to, you've got to turn, you've got a flip of a coin, you're reversing it well, on no, the Sunday. I'm, I'm, I like, think, I'm, imagine I am, it though. I'm reasonably friendly with the with the owners of Knock Hill as well. And so I was messaging afterwards and he was like, oh, what do you think? And I'm like, yeah, it's shit. <laughs> Why is that shit? And he's God, like, explain no, to me. No, no, it's great. I'm like, no, it's really not. <laughs> well, well, go on then. It's just because you're, so many... you're used to going another way. No, I think... <laughs> Around the to be fair, to be fair, fifty percent of it is really good. So term term one is fine. So term one is the last really one. Like, Jesus so it's the hairpin, but it, mm. it works quite well. It's just a bit of an off camber sort of front endy thing. That's but that's that's fine. So that's okay. That's as good as it is the other way. And then imagine you go down the back straight that's not a straight, but then that's a long right kink. Yeah. So that's the main issue because when you break. I imagine it fully at full spe- at full speed. You break it. You'd break hard on the right hand side of the tire, and if you got yourself caught out, you just you would take off and fly. And, <laughs> and that's that's a, that's a horrendous corner, which for that left, which is car lube. I hate. I don't like. It's that. called Clarks. How's oh, it got a new sponsor? Yeah, it's been Clarks since the seventies. <laughs> they had a sponsor for two years. Yeah. When was that? A bit ten years ago. <laughs> so you do car lube backwards. <laughs> Just doing good, is it? <laughs> but then you get to the chicane, and from chicane, the chicane's rubbish as well. So the chicane, <laughs> the chicane, <laughs> you can't see the chicane. It's brilliant. So you have to like set yourself up. You can't see where you're going, and then you so you sort of break Same as the other direction, and then do actually. a jump, but down a thing, and then it goes really good. So yeah. the the what would be sector one, but would then be the last sector, is actually mega. 
Oh, so going to going all no going all the way up the hill, which you come down normally. That's really cool. Yeah, the last corner, which is the first corner, is quick. It's quick, isn't it? As you come with the top of this. Yeah. And do you know what? Pitching. It's really so. We we did you Scottish Ducati Week. Which yeah, is, which is a bit like World Ducati Week, but substantially smaller. But, and a weekend. <laughs> but it's, yeah, <laughs> run, run over two days. <laughs> <laughs> but it it was cool, you know. Some real like there were some cool guys. Yeah, there. There was Foggy was there. Foggy. Um, there was Carl Froch, the yeah. boxer was Charlie there. was there. You were there. It was yeah. Ian Simpson, Ian yeah. McPherson, Scottish Roy. When it comes to racing, yeah, yeah. I'm missing no, some out. I'm, gonna, mm, I'm yeah, missing no, some out. Uh, Ruben's house was there. Oh yeah, I forgot. Because that's what I was going to tell you about. So Ruben's house was there. Who was about to race the baggers? Isn't he? Oh, He's going to yeah. race in, in the on the baggers. Yeah. yeah. Well, after this Scottish Ducati week, he he'd actually been in touch with my boss wanting to race super sport because he because he's decided he still got it and he's going to go race and i do not doubt that he still got it because i've never seen anyone do what he was doing so we were there basically to try and take the the punters around really yeah so it was a it was a track day infused with a experience wasn't it the whole yeah, thing it's yeah. cool really That's good, good event. Fun, yeah. they had loads of stuff going on <clears throat> it was genuinely really good they had like stunt shows and they had like all sorts of stuff that i can't remember but it was really good so, yes, yeah, so Zaus is supposed to be helping out the punters and stuff, right? I've never seen anyone cut people up <laughs> so much in my life. So he was riding this Ducati Hope Hyper Motard. He's never ridden the, the track before. And he has ridden that bike, but he's never ridden the track before. And he set off out of pit lane on cold tyres. And I'm like, where the fuck did he go? <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway, so then he laps me about four laps later. And then I literally, I'm like trying to be nice to these customers that are having a really good day and everything and like you know i'm following zaus and i'm like he's lining that guy up the guy's like 300 meters away at the apex and you can just see zaus like lunging <laughs> but leg off and everything so, oh, honestly, up, so, so, cool. so he was on a hyper motor i was on a v4s so i definitely had the bike advantage right so finally got my eye in and started to be fast enough to, to ride around with him and then so i thought i'd do a bit of a sort of a play race with him for the people that were watching so that was all good. We did a yeah, bit of a no, play no, race. Hold on, hold on to our listeners. Play a race. Yeah. No, you were, no, 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 so, no, no, he was up for it. He no, was no, a competitor. This is, this is how it started. So it did start like that. <laughs> so then I was like, right, I'll do a play race. And that was good. And we sort of were passing each other and doing a bit of messing about. I had massively the bike advantage, so it was fairly easy for me. And then I came in and one of the, someone I don't know, one of the, one of the guys on the day was like, oh, he passed you going down there. And it really wound me up. Because this person didn't realise we were play racing. I thought, fucking, I'm not having that. <laughs> so you the next turn one, watch. Yeah. yeah. So the next session, I did decide that. I thought, I'm going to show him what I can do. Have him. So, so I caught on him. On a track, So I caught him and I was like, right, I'm not even going to mess about. I'm going to pass him and fuck off. <laughs> right? So I did. But Ruben being as mental as Ruben clearly is, I'd only met him that day. He's a brilliant bloke, by the way. He's, like, yeah, he's well connected. Yeah. He's just mega. Mad as a box of frogs, but he's cool. Cool as. He still the, looks he, cool. So I went past him. I've got a, a bike that'll lap five seconds a lap quicker regardless. He decided he can jump on the back of us. and But I've kept my head down. <laughs> Three corners later, a red flag comes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's lobbed it at the scenery. Yeah. Yeah. And he <laughs> come back in with the greatest story ever off the bike went into limp home mode as he was in full lean. Yeah. Uh, well, probably once it was sliding along the road, it where's, did. Where's my excuse book <laughs> for yeah, that you're gonna, one? You're going to get limp, that out, yeah. limp mode, full lean. He also, he also had a customer falling out with him that day because he cut him up so bad at one of the corners. But he had to well, kill that's it. exactly what he was yeah, doing. It was scything through people. It was meant to be a fun track. But, he, but then he wasn't even bothered. He'd come back with his bike full of grass and mud and flipping handlebars all bent. And then he starts chatting chicks up because that's just what he was doing. He's just like, yeah. Yeah, he was on a mission that weekend on all sorts of things, wasn't he? Yeah. Funny guy, though. Yeah. <laughs> funny, funny guy. And you should have seen, they had, them, they had that motor trainer and, you know, we're all having a shot of the, of the, the simulator. And I thought, oh, that's just quite cool. Ruben got on it and then completely decried the whole thing of rubbish and made the guy come in and reset up, recalibrate the braking because it didn't feel right on diving towards the corner. And... And it's like, oh my God, Ruben, just, it's a bit fun. It's a bit, and there's a big queue of people wanting to go on and Ruben's hogging it, saying, no, 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 no. You fixed the bike. But that was Italian, wasn't it? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I was invested but anyway. <laughs> back to not kill reverse direction, I completely disagree with you because I'm a lap record holder in the reverse direction. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I am. I'm going to get a biscuit to that. B bike, bike or car? Car. <laughs> I hold the not kill lap record. I love for, a biscuit. <laughs> and it'll never ever get beaten because it was the super sport lap record before the corner got changed. The hairpin? Yeah. Did you? Mm-hmm. No, we do. That Forever. What Triumph. Bank? Super Sport 675. Hmm. Hmm. Do you have a knock kill lap record on? No, do I shy? <laughs> do you not? Do you no, not, no. Do you not have do a BMW? I do not have a lap No, but you not have like the BMW. They've not been there. Oh. 
No, no. Wait, oh, Rich, you didn't go, did you? Well, Richard Cooper would have got that, wouldn't he? Well, probably. But wouldn't he? Probably. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's pretty handy on a BMW. <clears throat> and everything else. And everything yeah. else, exactly. But um, no, here's a question. So hang on, hang on. We've got a lap breaker to not kill. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't. No. High five to that. Well, I had a biscuit to that beforehand. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I touched the biscuit, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, here's a question. Is not kill the only bike, sorry, the only circuit on the BSB calendar that isn't MSV owned? Or um, is it MSV owned? No, yes, yes still, because Silverstone is Thruxton. gone. Thruxton as well. Oh, Thruxton. Thruxton's bark. Yeah. Which uh, Bart Grant so the cars. yeah, so it's literally only Thruxton yeah. and Knock Hill now. Thruxton right, Hill, yeah. Oh, there we Silverstone's are. been binned. Yeah, which is cool to go to Spain next year. You know, you want to get on to that after. Okay. So, yeah, we'll how just... did you go from? Because I do want to know. <laughs> how did the commentary bit thing start? Commentary thing started at Knock Hill, as everything has for me because it's the, it was a circuit in Scotland. Um, when I was between, I think it was between race cars because one had been smashed to bits and it couldn't get built in time for the next one. And it was a meeting like this outside. You, I don't know if you can, you can. Yeah, the be able to it's that, a bit yeah. wet. <laughs> and um, I, I was doing something like that was called club cover, which I would go and build tire walls if somebody crashed and the marshal needed a hand. Um, but Gillian Shedden, who was butcher back then, who's now the the managing director, she was in commentary with Gary Stagg, who got me involved in the whole thing. Did Gary? He's a great guy, and uh, well, I could touch him in a minute. But Gillian needed to go away at lunchtime. So she saw me in the pit lane and said, do you fancy doing the, post, the pit lane and post race interviews uh, for the for the commentary? And I was like, ooh, like everybody goes, ooh, maybe not. And she goes, you'll be fine. It's not difficult. And I thought, well, yeah, okay, cool. Let's give it a shot. And that was it. And I never looked back since. And I, I've, I've, I've loved it ever since. And Gary Stagg, the commentary tower is actually called the Gary Stagg Commentary mm-hmm. Tower, not kill, because Gary, who set up a great radio station, the first commentary broadcast radio station at any circuit in, anywhere in the UK, and it was broadcast on 1602 Medium Wave at the time. He got me involved in it. Brilliant guy. He was just set to start retiring um, pre-COVID, and he was involved in a horrific bike accident. It really it was, wasn't his fault. Him and his wife held up. He was he was effectively wiped out head on by a car on the road, and Gary lost, yeah. a, he lost a leg from the hip, and Hilda lost a, a leg from the knee. So... Um, if you're listening, Gary, watch him. Love you. He's a great guy. He got me involved in the whole thing and he kind of set me up to... He taught me how to interview people as well um, to try and start a, a sentence like who, what, where, why, when so you're not getting a one-word answer. Mm-hmm. Even though if I give Christian Eden a, a question like that in the pit lane, you will give me a one-word answer. Yes. He's, he's, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> of which you do it's, it's like you're almost like traumatising me in the microphone sometimes you know right. but, you, but you are like, this is why you're to this he's, when, you're on his turf now he's yeah. like that you're getting it <laughs> but it's totally true whenever you be I've been interviewed by quite a few people in my time and there's definitely a, an art to it um, yeah. and there's those that know how to open ask an open ended question rather than a closed one yeah and there is definitely a, a, a real art to it. I'm trying my hardest with you. You make it hard for me sometimes, but I? I know you, but you enjoy it because you've got that face on when you do it, that smile, of, you know. <laughs> He's very good at telling you loads, but saying nothing. Or, you know, he doesn't give a lot away. And he's very, very cunning and clever at that. He'd be a hell of a poker player if he didn't race bikes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, like, you know, like, you know what I think the best? I've got a, I've got a theory on poker. <laughs> well, surely the... Right, the whole, con, the whole theory of poker is you poker face it, right? Yeah. So you bluff. Mm-hmm. So surely the best way is if you've got no idea what you've got. You know, if you've got, if you don't know how to play poker, you're the best bluffer ever, <laughs> yeah. aren't you? We played poker on holiday. Do you, know what I mean? you would be shit at poker. Because you're like, oh, I don't know what I've got. I'll just, yeah, I'll raise you. Of course I, I will. I don't know how to play poker. <laughs> right? Did I win? <laughs> Everyone would be playing it, going, he's going to raise. He's yeah, gonna but raise. I, I don't know how to play poker, and we were we were we went to Palma directly after BSB Brands. Aunt me, Angela, Guy, and Lola, and they had a in the hotel that we stayed at. They had like a, a ca- casino night, uh, and it was full of Germans. Uh, it was basically a German hotel, and I don't know how to play poker. My son kind of knows how to play poker, and Lola had no idea neither did Angela. So myself and Angela stand with the kids, and the kids are doing okay getting this poker, and then they buggered off to play something else. So me and Angela, like, fancy having a shot. So we sit down, and the guy deals with a couple of cards. I'm looking, giving it. No idea what that means. No idea what that means. And then he puts <laughs> some cards down in front of him and he starts looking and doing stuff and he goes around the table asking people if they want to put money in or chip in. And I've got no idea what to do. So the guy next to me put in three chips, so I put in three chips. And then they come around again, he put three chips in, so I put another three chips and Andrew taps and goes, Do you know what you're doing? Bear in the mind it's not real money. Okay, it's just money you get given. But absolutely no idea what I was doing and I ended up winning. Because and there yeah, answers my because theory. No idea. Just keep putting the money in, and then the, the and guy, that, face, the guy that I was no up idea against, what you've got. He folded, mm-hmm. and then he, he threw his cards in, and I gave my cards to the dealer, and the dealer laughed <laughs> and put them under the pile. I didn't show anybody else, so I thought well, that's quite good. We took this fake money, 
and we went and got a drink. <laughs> Simple as that, but I don't know how to play poker, and I think it's a weird game. It's a silly game, but my son is pretty damn good at it, which is annoying, and I don't know how we learned to play poker at 15. I, but, well, I learned at sixth form, because that's basically all we did. That's school, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know, they've got different names for them probably now, haven't they? Yeah, in Scotland, I don't know what sixth form is. It's the one after school. <laughs> oh, right, university. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a bit in between. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, no, it's the bit between I've finished school and then I'm not quite ready for the next bit. Right. There's like an interim bit. In the pub. That's what, I, that's what we are, the pub. So. Oh my God, that is brilliant. I'll tell you what, we were briefly having it, like waiting for Christian to turn up. And we were talking about your educational past, how mm. you didn't attend university and yeah. did now this. It's a brilliant way of doing it. Yeah. Would you like to explain your university years? <laughs> <laughs> my univer- my sister went to university and I never. I went and got a job. I wish I'd gone to university, but then I ended up living the student life through my sister. I had bags of cash and all her <laughs> friends. So it was, I was like the man about town in Dundee. It was brilliant. O'Neill's and Mardi Gras and then chips and cheese. And then whatever else after that, but it was it was it was, fun. It was good times. That sounds like a proper sign off for like a show, <laughs> doesn't it? And everything else after that. It was fun. It. it was, and it was a way to do it though. You know, everybody else in Dundee at that time, the students had no money, and I was going up like working with like, some money. Let's, what, let's what, go. What were you doing then? We talked about your racing career. I was working at Knock Hill then. Yeah, yeah. What like from school sixteen? Well, I, left. I started working at Knock Hill when I was seventeen years old. Right. And kind of. I've hung around ever since. I'm sorry. No, yeah. what, what were you doing at that? Oh, oh yeah. wow. I started. I was doing bins and bogs, you know. Really? <laughs> Emptying the bins, tidying toilets and stuff like that. And then moved into strapping people in for race experiences. Uh, and then uh, got I started instructing when I would be 18 years old. Right. Um, instructing people in the circuit. I've done that for maybe 10, 15 years. That's where the grey hair comes from. What it's, sort of, uh, how many days a week does it operate? A knock was open seven days a week. I'm now there three days a week. I've kind of stepped back. And it's from back dusk till dawn as yeah, well, Oh, God, you know what? Yeah, you've been there, yeah. <laughs> Eight in the morning till six at night for track nights and things. But, I mean, it's a great place. It's, it's served, yeah. served me really well. Uh, and I've got a lot of respect for the people that run it and, and operate it. But I'm, I'm now at a point where I can... I step back from doing six and five days a week to doing three days a week for Knock Hill, and I can do other stuff. I'm lucky enough to do the BSB, and I work a bit for a, a car company called uh, Arnold Clark, who I do some car reviews for, which is good fun. Uh, and I've, I do some hosting stuff as well, so it's kind of very. And, and you've done some commentary on cars in World Championship. Yeah, well. yeah, I done World Endurance Championship for the FIA. Um, and, and did all that, that come fun. just through the? The Knock Hill, it started off at Knock Hill. Yeah, but the commentary come, started from Knock Hill, but the World Endurance Championship commentating I got to do for cars um, was a friend of mine called um, Alan McNish who phoned me up and, and took and said, look, we need a commentator for Le Mans. Are you free? I said, well, I hope so. When, when is it? He goes, it's this weekend. I said, ah, super bikes in Knock Hill. <laughs> so he, he goes, go and see what you can do. So I went and had a, a quick chat with Jelly in the office and she goes, well, you can't turn an opportunity like that down. you got to go. So you were all Knock Hill doing the super bikes and I was away to Le Mans. Stuart Hicks still picks me up and that, you let us down, <laughs> you went away, you showed how your commitment was to the, to the and cars. At, and and at what, who is it that, because um, I don't know who sort of runs the radio, is that a BSB run and operated thing, the BSB radio, is that run by BSB? Like, uh, like who is who came to you and said, there is a job going? Stuart. Yeah. So it is yeah. BSB that yeah. runs it? Yeah, Stuart, Stuart got me involved in, in the commentary of things and... and um, yeah, it's a BSB thing, BSB radio, funded by Kawasaki Key Options. There's other sides of it as well. Again, that's been added out. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's probably will be. There's other, it's just it's tagged into my memory. I can't not see <laughs> it. Okay. And the other side, you know, I'm, I'm I'm the commentary, and then I hand back to the studio, which is like Alan Hyde or Diana Binks. That's funded through something else. That, that's kind of done through uh, Paul Mazzell and his, his company, but it all, it all operates under the same thing. Mm-hmm. We're a team of three laddies, you know, in the pit lane, who, um, who, who's been there for, I mean, you know, I, I was nervous to how Larry was going to take to me after he's worked with Fred for so long. Mm. Um, but I absolutely adore working with Larry. He's, he's fun. He doesn't realise how funny he actually is. He says some things in the radio that are just funny. But he, it's, it's his knowledge and his background knowledge and the people he knows. you know, And that's something I'm still trying to learn and, and, and pick up on, that he knows absolutely everybody up and down that pit lane. So I'm, I'm trying to do my best. I've got better this year. First year was just terrifying. It was all these people saying hello to me and I was like, I only knew like Christian had in and and, certain, and, the, and the main super riders and a few super sport riders but now <clears throat> I've gone and visited the, the RNG Talent Cup I've, I've been in the BMW paddock I've been in, gone and seen I've become really good friends with a lot of the Pirelli National Junior Superstock riders who have added me on Snapchat which is just hilarious <laughs> you know I'm only on Snapchat because of the kids my, my, my guy my Lola I've got to have a streak going with them 
I actually falling out with Lola. She ended the streak the other day. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, I don't even know what you're on about. Okay, well, the Snapchat kids out there will know exactly what Snapchat streak's about. And I was devastated with Lola. You've got so much time to reply back to Snap and you get a little flame, keeps oh, okay. it going. And Lola left me unopened for however long, 12 hours, and the, sneak, the streak ended. And she's like, just pay the 99 pence, Dad, and we can re- restore it. I'm like, nope. As a matter of principle, we're not going to do you that, can, do you? You can literally buy loyalty on yeah. Snapchat. Yes. 99 friends. pence is cheap, man. Doesn't friends. it? That's it. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, do you want me love back 99 pence? You can pence also make yourself look good, but I've completely forgotten where I'm going with this. Oh, yeah, the young kids there, uh, Owen Jenner, <laughs> Owen Jenner, Cameron Dawson, these guys, you know, I've become really good friends with them as well. And I'm, like, I'm learning people in the park, and I love it. And long may continue. You and, know, well, I guess that sort of thing only comes through time. Like, you can't just, yeah. you can't learn that in a week, or you can't even research that, can no, you? No, you can't. Yeah, I can research yeah. what you do. I can research what you do over the weekend. I can look at every single lap time and sector and see where you've gone good and where, where things have improved over the weekend. But I can't go and Google and research the guy in the back of your garage mm. does the tires or, you know. But also, the I guess, the rapport you get with the rider, you yeah. can't research that, can no. you? Because you have to build that and get yeah. that. You know, you sort of said it before, because I guess you suppose get that inkling of the people or the timings when you can and can't yeah, go yeah. and... I know when I can't speak to you. Well, not don't, you know. I, 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 think it gets, to me, yes, I was convinced that he didn't like me who? when he used to race for Tissonetic. You know, Tycho, you're going to let me see this because um, it was unfortunately <laughs> the year that Keith and you were racing at Knock Hill. And yeah. it, it wasn't going very well anyway. Keith, Keith had that bad accident, and broke both legs, uh, and then you did, did done the same. Well, to one the next one day, leg, yeah, yeah. But it was we only, went home with one leg out. Oh, yeah, shit, yeah, but yeah. this was on the this was on the Friday, and I was convinced at this point. No, I've tried with Christian Eden. I really have tried with him. I was saying this to the media team. I'm going to Snapchat him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna snap for it and I'm on open. But I was I was speaking to my <laughs> <Nine-nine> pens all <laughs> from <laughs> speaking with our media team and okay, well, Chris O'Donnell and Ian Struthers Pepper Rimmies at the time I was like they were like, Oh, let's go and speak to Christian Eddie and he's, he's he had a really good session on free practice Friday. And I was like, ah, I just don't think he likes us guys And they're like, Why? It was it's just he's quite intense and he's quite he's a bit cold and I don't know, and they're like, no, no, no. I always thought it was quite nice. Let, let, the, 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 I, I quite like the, the coldness. The, <laughs> this is a new me. I didn't even realise I had it. Oh god, I've you... got an alter ego. I didn't know I had. But, but <laughs> they said no. We need to go and do this. We need to go and do this because you're, you're quite top, near the top of the times, I think. But you did a good lap. Uh, so went in the garage, and I was a bit like, oh, it's just hesitant. <laughs> it's a bit hesitant. And, <laughs> Walked up towards the garage, looked at the back of the garage, gave you a wave, and you gave me a thumbs up straight away and walked to the garage. And I thought, oh, well, this is good. This is going well. And we had this lovely chat with each other. And I came away thinking, wow, what a nice guy. You know, this, this, when was that? How many years ago was that? Uh, Tycho. Well, it must be at least five. Is it? Yeah, yeah, because you went to PBM after that. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, I thought, oh, I was, and I came away saying, what a nice guy. And, and it was little Chris in the office, wee hairy guy. He'd done a lady. He goes, see, you should always give people a chance. He's a nice guy, really. I said, have you spoken to him? He goes, no, no, I haven't. I've just, I've just listened no, to the interviews. But... <laughs> <laughs> Never judge a book by his cover until you snap. That's why we sent you in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't don't go in. Go on, yeah. get, send Duncan in. He's keen. He's yeah. well keen. They, they, they did used to like to try and throw me under the bus a few times. There was a, there was a point where Chris at Not Kill used to take pictures of me if I was if I was speaking to any <clears> woman, <throat> any girl, he'd take a picture of him, put it on Not Kill social media, and tag Angela, my wife, in it. And then <laughs> you have a very that, understanding wife. Yeah, yeah, that happened for quite a while until Jillian said you need to stop doing that. <laughs> You'll get him divorced. But that was one of the funny things that Chris thought. But yeah, there you go. I, I honestly thought for a while that guy doesn't like me. He's just, he gives me that stony face. Just my ice cold demeanor. It's ice, the ice man. The, ba- the Batman of the park. Oh, did you hear that? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love you. You can go to Turkey and get your teeth in Greece. I'm going to eat that. Yeah, go with Grace on that one. But here's a question. How long? Nothing like having a go at the host, eh? It's got, it got to be done, honestly. Sure. It just, hey, just go for it, lads. Just tear into each other. But when does work start for you in a BSB week? You know, you're talking about the preparation. Right, you're talking right, about you're talking well, about the lap times. You're talking about the circuit. I don't know, think it ever really stops. To tell you the truth, I'm I'm always trying to keep it fresh in my mind, from weekend to weekend. Um, I'm super critical of my work, I, I, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I'm I I'm very lucky that I, I get on so well with the timekeeper Sam uh, Richard Evans and Sam Jones. Put them in the correct order. Um, Richard's the chief timekeeper. Sam Jones is uh, Richard's kind of right hand guy. Um, and Sam records everything I do on his laptop and then he sends me after the event in a file so I can listen to the commentary. Um, so is that what you do on the way home? Yeah, and I, I usually do on the way to the next event. So I remind myself, bang, exactly, so I can hit the ground running on Friday uh, and know exactly what happened to the previous event. 
Um, and I'm, I'm always like, oh, I didn't see how, that. Did how much footage is that? How much audio uh, file is that? That's seven like... hours on a Friday. Eight, well, it can be up to eight hours on eight hours on a Friday, and it's whatever it is, Saturday and whatever it is, Sunday. It's a lot of, lot that of stuff. That is a like, lot of The audio. joys of living in Scotland. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every, every drive is long enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Orton Park's my other local <laughs> circuit. <laughs> But I, I do listen to it, and, and I'm critical. What happens when you go and work at Knockhill? Do you have to just sit in the car until it's finished? <laughs> yeah, just sit there all day. <laughs> but I don't listen to it at Knockhill. I'm not. I'm not a complete weirdo, you know. I don't want you to think I am. But I sometimes even put Eurosport on and, and mute Eurosport and put my footage, my voice over Eurosport to see if it makes sense what I'm saying. Because a lot that's of the stuff idea. that is actually yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. A lot of what I do is I I'll, I'll watch. I Brand Hatch, for instance, I watch you coming into Clearways through Clark Curve, past me down Paddock Hill Ben up towards Jude's, I watch you come down to Graham Hill Bend, I watch you go along Cooper, through Surtees, disappear, then I look at the television screen. So it, I just want to make sure what I'm seeing with my eyes, I, it could be so much easier if I watch the telly, I'd probably see a little bit more, but I like to actually watch it and rather than just watch the television screen. And then the bits I can't see, I'll watch the television screen then. But if you're you're in front of me, I want to watch it, and I want, I want to see it because you see other things as well. The, the, the television kind of narrows it down and it'll maybe focus on just Christian Eden as he dives up and said Leon Haslam. But what, the camera doesn't see is me noticing that just behind you, Lee Jackson's had a massive mob moment going in towards. Mm-hmm. You know, I can see that as it happens and unfolds. So, so I take it certain tracks are a lot easier for the like yeah. brands. Must yeah, be brands one of the is mega. Brands not kill. Not kill. Not kill is amazing. Yeah, and then you get Alton Park, where I see you breaking for turn one, and then you're round turn one, and I lose you for a building, and then you accelerate away, and you're gone. Yeah. So it's kind of all it's all TV based, but uh, yeah, I do. I do watch the Eurosport TV with my voice over it. Sorry, Steve. I love what you I love what you do, but it's it's um it's, it's don't you think fun. he looks like Paul Potts off of X Factor? He loves it when I tell I him. don't know Paul Potts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch X Factor. <laughs> I don't watch that. He's too, busy, he's, too, he's too busy either listening to himself. Please put up a, a, com- a comparison now of Steve Day and Paul Potts. And Paul Potts. No, no, I'll I'll Steve, I hope you listen to this because he loves it. I know who paper pictures. I actually, I actually call him, just call him Paul. He loves it. Yeah, no. He will I'm, get it. I'm not going to follow it with the guy. We're talking the cold man Batman of the paddock. You know, he'll get away with it. You know, Paul just go, just, yeah, yeah, all right, mate. Yeah. Right, don't hit me, Christian. <laughs> yeah. Get a wee Ace Man stick on your helmet next year. I did once, I did have a, I had a, um, Top, well, I did have an Ice Man helmet done once. Where yeah. did where did Lightning come from? Oh, just from Lightning McQueen, off cars. Yeah. So where did that come from, then? Well, Disney did it. <laughs> I, I know, I know that. But so <laughs> how, did you, how from... did you pick up the, the nickname? Could someone put the heating oh, on? It's, it's got, got cold in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't put the heat on. No, don't put the heat on. Just because. Can I take sorry. my jacket off? You can do what you want. Sorry. Just because. I just love the film. All right. I thought it was because you were a little and, fast, or and well, I've got, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go back on it now. But I always thought because like Lightning McQueen's just a nice guy that likes racing. So I thought it's yeah. a bit like me. Feel the speed. I am speed. I am speed. I am speed. And you got the Lightning leathers for your test leathers mm-hmm. as well. Haven't you? Yeah, cool. I tell you what. While we're on the subject of Air uh, Christian, in did you call your son Toby because it was Turbo? Just did you have to go, like your beautiful child in front of you? Went, what's going to be a fast nickname? <laughs> like, <are> you, we, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? We could, we could, nah, it's not nah, it's Nick, Nick, and I looking at you going, no. He's, he's only just gonna... he's only just past one, and we literally just call him Turbo now. I know Turbo, Turbo, Turbo to, like, and I'm just going. He's blatantly named his child. We, we should have fast... just we should have just called him Turbo. <laughs> Is he going to be a racer? <laughs> Imagine that in school. What's the name? Turbo. <laughs> Genuinely, don't know. Yeah. Like honestly, because obviously we spoke about it and and having like your kid and you know you were yeah. so keen on having him racing. Yeah, I'll give him the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I won't. I won't push him. See, I put guy. You're cups. calling him Turbo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Turbo. If you have a daughter, she could be whiskey. <laughs> You'd better like this. <laughs> It'd be fun. Your your wife's lovely, by the way. She she sends me messages if I'm commenting on Friday via Instagram about how you're getting on and thanks for mentioning us and stuff like that, Nicholas. Because there was a few she wasn't at, you were, you were flying mm-hmm. solo, the long ones. Yeah. So she'd tune in via the, the TSL and the radio. So I always make sure to give Toby a big big up Tobes. Yeah. Turbo to punch my earphones or something. <laughs> no, she does. She loves listening because, <clears throat> yeah, like, yeah, I guess everyone that's, I guess it's not just for those at the race side. At race side is yeah. it? I know I've got a few mates that I know listen to the BSB radio at work and they just have it on and, yeah, yeah. while they're away working. It's, yeah. it's, we have it's a good. lot of people listening. I mean, Dave Sellers has listened from Equatorial Guinea. We've had people in Mexico, we've had people in uh, California, <coughs> Australia, Tom Tapars' family listening. There's people all over the world. You're global, you know, proper, proper cool. We have four listeners to this show from Russia. Wow. Da. 
Does that make sense? Do you know Russian? No, do, do, I can barely speak English, man. Never mind. <laughs> Please, I just know Russian. Da. What does that mean? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> Simple as da. that. Da. Smirnoff. Da. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm guessing them, but we're, we were just we're just going to fully go with this the Russian element. We were fully going with that. So, no, oh, we've just lost our four Russian listeners anyway. <laughs> yeah. There we are. There. Yeah. <laughs> four Maybe, down. I don't know if you want Russian people listening to what you're doing actually. But you know that I want. Let's go back to the Fred Clark. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when you got the job offer. Yeah. That is how intimidating was that. That yeah. element of going, you know, he's been the voice of BSB for so many years. Now, at the end of the day, every every story needs a new chapter. Every p- page turns, every poetic sentence after that. But even so, filling those shoes, yeah. was there any doubt in your mind? Like, was there actually, maybe I'll say no to this? Or was no, it always a yes? there was never a doubt to say no to it. And mm. But there was always a doubt when I was driving to the first one, I was about to do a U-turn halfway down the M6, <laughs> thinking, no. Nah. I had this massive. Where, where was the first round? Silverstone, and Silverstone was the first round. I had this massive imposter syndrome, thinking I can't, you know, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I was getting myself all worked up about. I was really looking forward to it in off season. I had to do that little video in my house and say, you know, thank Fred for for all you've done, and I can't wait to, to to be in the commentary box and and my BSB t shirt, and that was great. And I got all this love sent to me, and then everything came crashing down as I was driving towards the first one, thinking, oh man, you can't do this. What happens if you can't? What happens if you can't? What happens if you can't do it? That's the biggest thing. And I, and I got there. Eventually, I met up with um, Alan Hyde, who was the studio guy, and I met Larry. And you know, me and Larry had to, to to work it out. I had to get on in that. And and I just thought, right, I got into the commentary box. The good thing about Silverstone is, as you come through Woodcote when you're spinning through there in sixth gear, whatever it is, and you're heading towards that first corner, I'm way back there. I'm on the outside, I'm miles away from anybody. I'm not in the pit lane. I'm not in the paddock. So it was quite good for me because I was removed, mm. and I was just there with two television screens and a printer that the, the timekeepers gave me the results. So I was completely removed and I, I thought if I get through, and I, I didn't commentate on the Friday because Silverson don't want to, to hire me for the Friday. So actually on Friday I went and walked about, looked at, looked at bikes in the pit lane, tried to get colour schemes of the junior classes because I know what the super bike guys are like. And I tried to meet a few people, but I was quite nervous. So, mm. you know, p- people came and said hello to me and I tried to do as much as I could. Then Saturday came and I thought, perfect, let's just go and do it. And I was away across the end. I just stayed in the commentary box all day. I just said away, had a couple of bottles of water, and I, and I did what I did. What I did, and I thought both Saturday went pretty damn well. Because I, 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 that, that must have been shit scary. Because have you ever been in the commentary box of Dublin? Yeah, yeah, I've been in. Usually when I'm injured, really. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we did a thing at Oakland Park though, but that's when I was doing the studio presenting work. Oh yes, yeah, so I've never been. I, in it was lunchtime. When you, yeah, I've never actually been in. Other than being interviewed. Yeah. I've never actually been into the commentary box with you. Yeah. Well, I was very, very lucky. Um, first time for me being at Thruxton, and I came yeah. up and saw you. And I tell you what, me hat, I'm not just saying this because you're in front of us. From the outside looking in, it is theoretically <laughs> the easiest job mm. in the world. You're watching racing yeah. and you just should say what you say. Because <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, we're all so for warriors, aren't we? You know, mm-hmm. you go home on a weekend and go, what a move, or that was shit, or this. And you're almost commentating to yourself. Yeah. But, like when you're standing, like, I stood in the room and I thought, let's see, you know, like how I would think and go around that. You literally exhaled. <laughs> like, like it's not just a piece of piss for you. No. The fact that you're sitting there and you, he's got his finger over the button ready like, to jump in when Larry stops and like the TSL and like even when like controlling, like, sh- like when Stuart Higg communicates and everything. And it's just like, right, go. And then you've got a pair of binoculars. It looks like a Russian sniper <laughs> yeah. off the side of there. A pair of binoculars watching the live coverage as well as like live feeds. And then you've got to incorporate, if Larry wants to jump in, and then you've got a coat, like even someone to jump in with you yeah. who isn't... Well, I, you arrived there and he, he just kind of gave me a wave and I said, yeah, and you come, and you come. And I said, just stick a headset on and just have a listen. So I'm talking away, talking away, talking away, talking away. So what do you think of that, Dom Herberson? And, and his face was like... And I was I was not there to chat. Pushed I was. <laughs> Should have seen him. Uh, and and you went with it. You done a good job. I did not. He'd say that. Never, no, but the fact that you're sitting there and it's just. Yeah. You watch it. I, you, when I watch racing, you know, like uh, you just get absorbed in it, and you're just thinking. You're not active. And, you know what and I mean. And do you find it easy to talk about things? Because it, it, what Dom says is true. Like whenever I've done stuff, I've done a few things with Eurosport, and it it baffles my head how. They make something so simple looking. Yeah. A simple piece of camera yeah. is insanely complicated because yeah. they have to cover a certain amount of things and they've got two, three people in their headset yeah. and they've got to pass over to someone who's interviewing someone or they've got to 
something coming in it's, and you'll have exactly yeah. the same thing well, but see, do, see you, for me, do you find it easier yeah to do that? i do it's slightly different for the the bsp radio uh, i hear myself <laughs> from ears and that's it and then larry will talk to me but when larry talks to me it's not off air it's on air so you know ah. I, I i i have had with the world endurance championship when you go away in that and i'm speaking interviewing somebody and then a frenchman will speak to me in years and you can you can tell when certain people on tv you can tell because they're talking to something they just kind of the, their eyes move yeah it's so hard know, isn't it your eyes move. insane but i i I also used to have Alan McNish shouting at me <laughs> during an interview, just shouting at me, saying, can I swear on this? Of course you can, yeah, sorry. Can. Just, no, I'm not going to. He'd be shouting some sort of... Oh, effect. for fuck's sake, go on, <laughs> yeah. swear. Fill the story in. Yeah, and I'd be asking the question to, to somebody at Le Mans or, or wherever we're in the world about what went wrong in your stint, and he'd be coming back with this completely rubbish shite answer. You know, he'd be trying to like play it down, and McNish and me would say, Tell me, tell us the bloody truth now. And then that's coming through my ears as loud as it is. And I'm thinking, and I'm trying to keep that straight face. But uh, that's that's different in the world of TV like that. You get two or three people speaking to you. It's quite difficult. Um, but you, I, I've always been quite good at it that I could I could pick up the main key phrase words. And I would know that if they want me to ask a question, I could then answer that, ask that question to them. But for, for me in the box up there, the, the Thruxton box is quite unique because it's air traffic control. So I'm commenting at the same time, and then the air traffic control radio starts speaking, and it's like somebody flying the, the 415 from Alicante that's heading towards Gatwick, and it's the red light. It's just bizarre, like... you know. But, yes, but, land. Yeah. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine that. Uh, attention control. There seems to be a high yeah. side in front of me. Can I please land? Please land. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's 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 also it's also the base. Thruxton's the base for the 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 air ambulance, so it takes off, and you know it takes off quite two or three times through the weekend, and unfortunately. When, when that takes off somebody somebody's needing help which you never like to see but I also like Thruxton because I've got my stock of binoculars which got an upgrade mid-season to a better pair so I can look all the way down to church and I can see you guys spinning through church but I spoke to the circuit manager Pat Blake and he needs to cut a tree down for me because you spin out with church and then go behind a tree if only we knew a guy that could cut a tree down and not injure himself that'd be great wouldn't it <laughs> do we know anyone Dom? I, I am the man I yeah. can't ride a bike for shit but I can cut trees right, okay, so, I've, I've, got a tree at, I've got a tree at trucks that it needs done not a problem son not no, a problem the only thing is I think it's in somebody's garden or something like that. it's not it's in the yeah, circuit it'd be so. Harry, man I've done yeah. plenty of sketchy job cash is, <laughs> cash is king young yeah. I've got a CPO I did uh, you know, that sycamore gap you know I did that you know that was a <laughs> Did you do that? No, did I? Shut I, I been... a... Do you know what? I, I've got another. Ar- Mate, I would, an arborist, seen, aren't you? I would not have been it? seen dead leaving the stump that high. Are you an arborist? <laughs> I'm a Is for... that what it's called? Well, I'm a forest, I really. No, because like. so I've got a tree cutting friend who's an arborist. Is that's that a motor lad. Yeah. He so should, I, I, did he, actually, he, I did actually message him. I'm like, that, is, that is a very good cook because I've done a bit of work with him. And I'm like, because it, it was some 16 year old kid, wasn't it, supposedly? I'm like, yeah, there's no way. So someone who cut. doesn't know what they're doing yeah. can do that. I heard a very good cut. I was speaking to was it John Hebson from PBM? Mm-hmm. You know John, and he was saying to me that's that's not they said it he was, was saying. Do you want some firewood? <laughs> yeah, no, well, no. That's, that's it the time. But he goes, look at the cut. That's never been a six year old kid. To, how can we dra- get up oh. there and then drag over it had a field a of like cheese? So. In it. it had a didn't it? I don't know. Back cuts make nah. everything is lovely. Oh, I forgot, but I can't. It's that 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 sycamore gap thing just went absolutely nuts, didn't it? Yeah. It went absolutely nuts. It's but like, it's gone quiet but now, no, though, but is it? The they thing, found the person. No, no, the, no. The guy, he's a guy from Planky Mill or Barwick. Do you know? Well, Nicola know where Planky Mill is. It's anyway. It's a Northumberland. It's like um, National Trust <clears> land. <throat> so. But the grand... it's someone who had some beef on it with National Aye, Trust. so they had a falling out, and he looks like Rob Neal. You know the blonde hair. He's got a wig going round Hexham and that, trying to disguise himself. I wow. kid you not, he's on like local papers, he's trying to hide himself. But his his grandchild was like on Snapchat, you know, the little you know with the flames and that. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, not yeah. even on Snapchat. But he was not going yet. round <laughs> You will be after this. But he was going round, he filmed the whole thing on Snapchat and that. But the mat like um he was a previous woodcut, you see. But the mad thing is, like I can go through that whole thing. It, he did a shit job of it. But the fact is he's had a, he's gone out he's gone out in a windstorm. Mm-hmm. It was coming in from the west, you know, the direction of the fell would have done it for him. He's had a brand new chain on because the chain's dipped. So when the chain slackened up, that's why the saws drove up on an angle. Natural cuts are crap. But I've been doing it since I was 14. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's like, there's no way a 16-year-old kid's done that. There's just no way. I totally agree with that. What's a chain dip? Chain chain what? Chain drop? The the, the chain's dipped out. So it's like, so he started the cut high, but when the chain slackened, so when a chain drops out the bar, it's moving too much, which makes the the cut uneven. I had a a little chain, so it was a a Qualcast one. I got it from Homebase. 
Oh god! Yeah, so I can't like, believe you could buy a chainsaw. It, that is nuts. It was about this size. But the every, damage you can do with one, isn't it? Like, well, no, but, you know, be, like I ripped my eye out yeah. of my head with a chainsaw. I hit a bit of ream bar. Well, mine, came back. mine cut me when the chain flew off because ah. I was cutting at an angle. It was all loose, and it came back and hit me in the wrist and cut me a bit. So I thought, you know what? Probably not going to use that anymore. The, the, <laughs> it was only I think it was only about thirty or forty quid, but the smell of it was amazing in the garden. A little bit, little bit of silky in there. Mm, where should we end? Lad, I used to work with it. This, I'm sorry, we've gone down. We've gone. This is like chasing the race, and we've gone down chainsaw. Chasing the chainsaw. Yeah. All over. No, no, but um, there's a lad called uh, Mike Atkinson who used to work with, right? Um, I was only 16 doing my apprenticeship, and he was up a Conifer Hedge, and he got kicked back off a saw, right? And it just mowed into his head. The oh. saw absolutely mowed into his head. Now, bear in mind. <laughs> Mike had a nose on him. He could have smoked a cigar in the shower. <laughs> sure. now, I'm telling you now, it was the beak on him. His teeth were all bucked up and everything like that. And I saw him like a year later, right? Brand new nose. Oh, all right. Brand new rack of teeth. Little hair, like, I mean, it was tiny little scar down there. You should see his missus absolutely smoking hot. Well, we have gone off topic. You no, no, we have, have like, abs- no, no, smoking, <laughs> abs- no, no, I'm telling you now, smoking hot and we're like that going because <clears throat> we had like the Christmas do and all the lads brought their missus and that and we're like, where did you find her? He goes, Dom, the best thing I ever did was cut me face off. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, honestly, he had what? Like, oh, mate, he had a face like a welder's bench, and the NHS have just rebuilt him a brand new face. He's a good looking fella, like, I don't know what they've it's done not with me. Be there, is it? No, I not, so. no, not a chance. No, no, but I'm telling you now, it's like, talk about chainsaw accidents. It's, it's, I could sit, we could do a different show on this, but anyway, we're here, we're here to talk about motorcycles. Yes, and Duncan so, Duncan. Oh. The reason, one of the big reasons we've got I'm you on gonna, Duncan. <laughs> Is your insane knowledge of BSB? So we're going to have a bit of a BSB roundup, huh? Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you started. You started you know on that, it before. You know that pressure situation. Yeah. That he controls back at BSB. It's gone out the window there. No, you. But you I can't remember last before, week. Like, remember. Like that. Like that last round. The crowd was insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've had the closest finish mm-hmm. in BSB history in points. Mm-hmm. I know we've had a closer finish in time, but it's it was touch and go between that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you reckon? Well. It was, the, it was a bit of a blur, wasn't it? For for me, it was. It, it started. It started um, at Alton Park, building up towards that. I think we all knew it was going to come to a head somewhere along the line. Donington was just the firecracker or the hand grenade thrown into the garage, which probably was one of these things. It's worst case scenario for PBM. That all that damage. Mm-hmm. Glenn Urban scores absolutely no points around. And goes away with no points. Tommy scrapes a few points. It was a questionable tire decision for both guys in that Donington Park ground. And then we went to Brands Hatch. Now, I went to Brands Hatch and I'm friends with both of them. I try and be as friendly as we can with everybody. But I look back at the previous result from the previous previous visit to Brands Hatch and, and even though Tommy had that, that slight points advantage, I thought the ball was in his court, obviously. He was a championship leader going in there and his previous time at Brands Hatch was pretty sensational. Uh-huh. You know, he, uh-huh. he didn't have a good wet one because he had a visor steam up, which he had again at Donington, which, mm. you know, I was, I was surprised at that. Uh, but the other two races at Brands Hatch in July, he was, he was untouchable. Um, and I think he did what he needed to do going in there. Um, Glenn couldn't have done anything more. Glenn was Glenn was sensational. Uh, Glenn was... And he was clever with it as well, you know. He, he tried to... He wasn't dirty. He was trying to be tactical to take Tommy Wide at Druids, and he tried to do it at Sterling Surtees as well, which I thought was quite good. It was, you know, that that's 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 allowed. He didn't do anything like wave a rossy leg or anything at him. Um, but the big 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 thing for them was Kyle Reid. You know, mm. Kyle. I think Kyle had Kyle tried a few times going towards Sterling's, and he looked so good in there. Um, I don't know if you've watched it back, mm. uh, but I, I think if Kyle could have had more of a chance of actually winning that, you know, if they'd been a, if he'd have been in the situation where where they're all kind of closer on points, but I think Kyle was really respectful of those two guys. He could have gone up and said a Christian. He could have done something, but what would he have gained out of that? Well, Absolutely nothing, and it would, you know, and it would have. You could go up and say to Tommy, so yeah. that's a Christian, didn't I? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I know so what you, mean. At, you know, he could have gone up and say to Tommy, but what would Kyle have gained to that? Nothing. He was going to be third in the championship anyway. Uh, uh, and, the, and the way it goes, I think he was very respectful. He could, well, he could have turned himself into a big pantomime villain there. He could have. He, he could, could have. have very you know, easily, I, I, you know always, I, mean? I always find that really quite a difficult one because it's <clears throat> how much extra should you give any extra leeway to championship competitors? So, you know, going into the last race. Yes, Kyle was in with a shout still because if the other two didn't finish, yeah, then he, yeah. he, I think he could have still won it. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, he was thirty points behind. Going yes, into the last yeah. Race. So he, so he, so, so if they didn't yeah. score, he could have won the championship because yeah. obviously we had thirty five points. But say it wasn't Kyle, say it was someone else. I always find that really quite a difficult one. I personally think you're better off being 
racing as you always yeah. were. I don't think I don't think Kyle. Um, I think he was fast, and you know the legs, were, the stressometer, as I call it, was there yeah, because yeah, both the legs, legs were legs flapping. Are off. <laughs> Jesus God, I don't he's, know how he, don't know how he does. He that. has a very odd style, doesn't he's he? He's only yeah. adopted that this year, though. Yes, you know, like looking yeah. at the history of it, he's like he's he's only just started doing this double leg. Dangle. I call it his stressometer when it when it, you know when Kyle was really trying because he starts flapping with his legs, mm-hmm. and, and you know I always used to grip the legs a lot on the tank and mm-hmm. things like that, and I think it's amazing what he does, but. You know, he 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 needed the two guys not to finish for him to win the championship. But I don't. He held me. There was. I'm saying he held back. Maybe he didn't hold back because no, Christian was eh, not Christian. Bloody hell! I'm looking at you again. Tommy was smart. Tommy was smart going towards Stillings. He would just position himself in the middle of the road and then bring it back on the breaking. So you know, if if Kyle was going to go up and say he was going to end up running out of road and things. And uh, like the the amount of times that the championship changed hands in that oh, last race God, was nine insane. times was it and even I mean going into the last lap Tommy was not going to be champion yeah because he was behind Kyle and it was a big move from Tommy it was a very big move and big he held move. the line yeah. just yeah you know he had the, the back end was going you know I mean fair play to all the riders but like you've got to say hats off to Tommy for finishing the job yeah um it, any championship it's always there's always a winner and a loser yeah and it's almost a shame isn't it and those two yeah. had had such a big Donington yeah yeah beforehand and it was gonna always gonna be a big one for the team. You know what I liked carrying about, on. You know what I liked about it after Tommy comes down, he goes through all that <laughs> with the glitter and stand up and revving the bike and the burnout. And I, I'm looking at the side of the, the commentary box and I can see Glenn down there and he's cuddling his his, his brother and, and Laura, his, his partner's down there, you know, he's he's high five now, but he, and I saw I kinda saw that happening out there with the big celebration and I saw Glenn do the big <sighs> and he walked. And he went on the track and he went up and he gave Tommy a big hug. And I thought, that's really good. And when he went on the track, the crowd went wild. And when they had a big hug, the place erupted. And I thought that was really good because all that had gone before it, all the, that had been done, I mean, you, you've got to be you've got to be like that. You've got to be a loggerheads with a guy in the championship fight, but you can't be a friend mm-hmm, with him. Mm-hmm. You, you're not going to take him to dinner at Frankie and Benny's and have a nice time. You oh, want posh. to, you know, yeah, well, wherever you want to go then. But you can't be. But then once it's finished, once it's all gone, Glenn showed the type of guy he is he went on the track there. And he congratulated Tommy, which I thought yeah. was really good. Really, yeah, really good. Guy. Really respectful. But Jesus Christ, what a race mean. I was, I was, I did that big, right, okay, and Larry Carter's doing his big blah, 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 blah. And up to Duncan Vincent to call the ace. And before that, I went, I done the big, <sighs> here we go, <laughs> push the button on it and let, let's talk about it. And I, I held my hand up a few times. And I have to say I was like that during the race because it's like, so, I mean, it's so cool it is to be involved in it and to watch you guys doing it. By the way, I never actually spoke to you after. Were you okay? Because you had a big high side on Saturday, Sunday yeah, race one. Yeah, no, Sunday race one. Yeah. Like, I had an absolute stonker of a high side. I, like, I, haven't, even, I haven't watched any of it back yet. Did but you like, bring it? You brought the safety car, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, I and then did Jason it. fall off because of your safety car? Did Jason fall off first? Yeah, he fell yeah. off. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't my fault. No, 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 your fault. Your fault. Your fault. Yeah. So I, I think yeah, Jason. Obviously, it was cold. Like yeah. the, it Left turned. Hand side. Like, it, Turned super wintry, didn't it, for no, that meeting? Like we'd had, we'd had a really oh, yeah. warm couple of weeks actually before it, yeah. and we went there and it was bitterly cold. I mean, and uh, yeah, I think Jason just fell foul of that first lap left hand side of the tire yeah. on you, well, you, after you, the safety car. You one looked sore. You one looked direct. Uh, like, I've never, head. I've never been that sore without being broken. Oh really? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait where was the crash? I haven't seen <laughs> it. I, it it's crashed it's out of Druids. Yeah. But we'd, we'd hold on. Turn one, two, two. two. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. But it was it, it was kind of a Frank Lowborn had one there as well. Was yeah, it like, it, it, nothing he had on his earlier on. Re, nothing yeah, his nothing, was nothing on yours. Well, it felt big. Well, <laughs> if you all say it's all yeah. job to say Fra- that. Franco had his just after the apex. He had his um, uh, picking up. Yeah, with him mine, to be fair, mine started at the apex. Well, so yeah, so we'd we'd run. <laughs> just held it. It kind of got to that point. Clutched it. We'd we'd run the hard tire. I decided I wanted to run the hard tire. It was about a fifty fifty split between the top yeah. top boys. So Glenn and Tommy they had the soft in. Me and Leon had the hard tire in. I think Kyle had the hard tire in, <clears throat> and. Yeah, we'd also changed some fueling stuff, and the the fueling wasn't quite right. I'm just making excuses now, but it was. Get that book out. But it was the it was a combination of all those things, and and I'd had a I'd had a couple of warnings. To be fair, I'd had a massive warning at Dingledale, as you come through there, where yeah. I just cracked the throttle and it it went on me big there, and I was had both legs off. And to be fair, I thought I am probably going to crash this race, but I was I was feeling quite good as well. Yeah. So I, I kept in it, and then yeah, I got to the middle of Druid, and the, at the first crack of throttle as well, I just didn't seem to have that sort of grip that I wanted. And it started to go, but it continued to sort of rotate round on me. But at the same time, I'm still going round Druids at this at the moment. And I could start to see the boys in front were just sort of, they were starting to accelerate and getting away. So I was like, I need to get on the throttle. Like, 
<laughs> I've got this, to. This calm. You know, well, no, so it's either, I, knew, ah. I, knew, yeah. I knew I had a 1% chance of staying on. <laughs> Ace man. Which to me was a chance. Yeah. So I thought, I'm just going to have to hit the throttle. So it was it was basically gone. And then I thought, I'll just fucking just hit the throttle and hope for the best. And it didn't turn out very well. And I was just like, yeah, I just hit the ground really yeah. hard. And it, like I said, I didn't break anything. But I got to the point where I'm like, there's something just, broken. You need here. to x-ray me again for sure. Like, I am broken. Yeah, just convince me there's nothing broken. But, I just, but honestly, I laid there. I was like, I went down like a sack of shit. And I was just like, Oh my god! And I, but I laid there, and I, I, they didn't need safety car. They should have just left me there, and I would have been perfectly happy, <laughs> just curled in a ball <laughs> on the there. exit curb. <laughs> no, trying to draw it... in air <laughs> <laughs> like a deflated whoopee cushion on the side of the track. Late, later, later after the meeting, oh, I was, I was hobbling back there. to the caravan to leave after the meeting, and one of the medics. She went, oh, oh, Christian, are you all right? I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I was <laughs> walking, like, so bad. And then she was like, oh, I was one of the medics that, that sort of attended to you. I was like, oh, thank you, for like, because they do an amazing job. Trackside. And she said, oh, but we had to laugh a bit because we asked what hurt. And you said, your bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> what did you land on? That was before the crash. <laughs> I <guess. laughs> So I gave him a little giggle. You know who impressed me a lot as well? I've broken my bum hole. You know who really impressed that's me some, in the That Sunday? is some down pressure, that, isn't it? You know what I mean? When, you, when, the, oh, when the rear exit's getting that much pressure. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, so it wasn't a great meeting for me. Oh, actually, it wasn't a bad yeah, meeting, but, but that no, was but a big hurt. No, no, you, you went out in the yeah. last race, like the race, didn't you? Is that correct? The last race. Yeah, yeah last no, race. so it was second. That would have been the first race on Sunday. Yes, yeah, so race. Where did two. you finish yeah. the second race? The third, the third race of the weekend, then because it's all a blur. Six, yeah. yeah. So I mean, Christ, with a knapped arsehole. Happy yeah. days. With a, yeah. broken, with a broken bum on. With a broken, yeah. <laughs> busted rear. <laughs> yeah. But you know who impressed me is a, a lot over the course of the weekend was young Max Cook. The rookie mm, he completely mm-hmm. wrecked a bike in the first race. I think mm-hmm. it was the first race of qualifying where he crashed at the last corner and it, it, it rolled up the track. <coughs> and you know what it's like? You roll a bike in the gravel and the scenery, it's a little bit softer, it's a little bit less expensive, but it rolled up the track. And I went to see Darren after that was a free practice day, wasn't it? Yeah. I went to see Darren. I said, you know, what, what's the deal? What do you need? He goes, uh, frame, swing and arm, seat unit, forks, oh. clocks, tank, engine. I was like, oh, right, okay. Yeah, it's, new power it's, it's absolutely, it's finished. Wheels the lot. Um, but then next day, uh, I actually called it wrong a few times. It was, I actually called it Liz Lee Jackson a few times. It was, oh, it was all going on. Yeah, actually, and it I was watched actually the race Max. back and Max was just uh, off yeah. the back of me. And then yeah. he sort of dropped off a bit later on, but I think that just comes with experience yeah. over time. Like he's showing the speed. Because this is one of the, the big questions really I wanted to ask you. Obviously, we see, or I see, the people that are racing against. And actually, when yeah. you're racing, you don't get to see many of the classes. Yeah. So, okay, not just in Superbike, but who do you see that's sort of making a name for themselves or starting to show progression or are there people that we're, we're maybe not able to see? Because like I said, it's so hard when you're racing. Yeah. Like for me, I don't get to see any yeah. other classes. Well, you'll know about your team. You know, I think your teammates are star. Um, and I think Ben actually come back into that um, super sport side of things. I think a lot of folk expected him to win the championship. I think they, there's a bit of pressure for the team as well, but it was a, such a new thing. Uh-huh. And you, you know, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. But come the second half of the season, Ben. Yeah, ben it, was, it was an interesting thing with, with Ben, to be fair, because he actually probably started the, the season, and I don't think he mind, will mind me saying that, but almost a little bit subdued yeah. in terms of results. He was sort like of. Like a bit safe. Now you're not pushing it. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know think if it was him being safe or just the bike was yeah. making progression or the two of them together, but certainly. I think the expectation was probably a bit higher from the, the pairing to start yeah. with. And then, yeah, mm. once he hit the ground running for the second half, it, was, Hatch, it was just pure After domination. That, yeah. After that, I also, I, I'm impressed with young Reese Irwin on the Astros, mm-hmm. GGR oh, Suzuki. What a Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah. I never thought I'd be commentating on a 750 Suzuki in any, any race. You know, I, I thought was, I thought that was way, way beyond me, uh, you know, because it's a, such an old bike. But mm. I, I think that they're, he got a world championship point at the World Super Sport round as well, uh, yeah, yeah. 15th place, I think. And such a nice guy, had so much kind of bad luck towards the end of the year. Oh, silly yeah. things. Yeah, an cause... exhaust bracket broke at Alton Park um, then he had the crash in qualifying at Donington and then you never know what's lurking about after a crash you know it's one of these things well it's that sort of thing that happened wasn't it yeah, sort of, yeah so one was the thing that led on to the next yeah, one and... yeah so I, I'm impressed with him he does uh, his teammate Jimmy Pern who picked up a, a bona fide podium at Thruxton but then was disqualified for a, some sort of space of being shimmed down too much you know and it yeah, impressed with him. Um, that's in the super sport class, the Pirelli National Junior Super Doc class, which is now gone. It, it doesn't doesn't come back anymore. That's 
replaced with the Pirelli Sport Bike National Championship. <laughs> I, I'm young, young on Jenner. I think he plays a clown a lot of the times when you speak to Jenner. You know, he plays a class clown, the, the idiot. But he's a clever young man, he, and he knows he rides a bike really well. Um, I think he's maybe struggling for a bit of budget to try and see where he goes for next year. Yeah. Um, but he impresses me. Um, Cameron Dawson impresses me as well. Only second year on stepping up into this bigger six hundred from a the little three or four hundred class. Um, and because um, the other rider that was fine with the challenge, Aaron Sylvester. Yeah, Aaron so Sylvester. He, I actually Asher watched Durham. that race and he was really oh. unlucky, wasn't he? The high side. Oh. Yeah. Which which race did you watch? The first one. Where he high sided through Clark And then he, he broke his arm in that We He didn't actually break his arm, but it looked like it, didn't it? It looked like it. The bike went over his arm, and then the bike went head on the tire wall. He sent me a text message uh, uh, via Instagram at night time, said, I'm actually okay. Didn't break my arm, be back tomorrow. And I was shocked at that. Two minutes later after that, Larry sent me a screenshot, a message he'd had from his, his girlfriend saying the exact same thing. Um, he was unlucky, and then he crashed, but he, he ruled himself self out with the championship there and then. He's unlike, unlike one, like, uh, um, don't a super like, old bike, a probably, No, it's like I think it's like a 2010. Like it's like the old R6. That. It's is like it, it really yeah. is. It's they put a different exhaust. <laughs> oh, I've like, noticed the front end's different on his one, isn't it? Because it's oh, not I, the letterbox front end. It's the kind of yeah. It's the, it's literally the older bike. It's yeah. like the Mark One of the R's, like yeah. that generation of the R6. You know what I mean? It's like and he can pedal a bike. Nice guy. Puts a good little team. I think it's the granny and granddad team, the NG Racing team, um, but also young uh, young Asher Dum. So the four of them went in that mm. championship with a chance of winning it, uh, and. Asher was really good this year, actually, because he missed the first round at Silverstone, joining me in the commentary box, and he came back from the air on in and just chipped away, chipped away, chipped away, because Sylvester built up quite a championship lead, but the others pegged him back. But um, Jenna was just, Jenna was good in that championship. He was clever when he had to be, had to be, yeah, a few DNFs that you, you don't want to get, but the junior classes are always like that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're the kind of, look at the result sheets, they're kind of peppered with holes where they fall off. But um, he came in there with a 17 point championship lead, he knew what he had to do. And he extended that on the Saturday when his, his rivals around him had a disaster. So all they had to do was finish whatever place it was on Sunday. But he knew that Cameron Dawson was a couple of places in front. So he walked away with his first championship. And uh, uh, yeah, but Larry says it as well. You know, he does, he's got the mullet. He's got this half moustache going on one side because it doesn't grow on the other side. He does like kind of play the clown, but he's, uh, he's, quite, a, he's quite a thinking little rider. He impresses me. If he can go further, it'll be great to see. Where does he go? I don't know. It's all about money at the end of the day. Uh-huh. Um, but making that next jump, as you know, is a difficult thing because mm-hmm. I look at James McManus for that. I think James McManus is a real good little talent. He won the Hell Performance Junior Super Sport Championship the year before and then didn't go through the Junior Super Stock, went straight to Super Sport with his brother and that team. Now, that's a big jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, James and Eugene had to develop that new Triumph 765 and a completely new team, new sponsor and that. And, you know... James found it hard, but James still scored some really good points. When he was out, when he was getting points, he was getting finishes. But, you know, I think James McManus is a real talent, but he didn't. we didn't see too much of it this year. Hopefully next year, uh-huh. he's had a year on the bike, he's had a year in that class. He's racing with different riders, and we will see James kind of show what he's, what he's very much capable of, because I think he is... You know, you don't win a Hell Performance Junior Super Sto- Super Sport race by 14 seconds around Downton if you don't have a talent. Yeah. You know, that's that's where they all go around in one big clump. And he pulled away 14 seconds and cleared off. And, you know, the kid's got talent. And I just think we just need to see another good year from him. And we'll, we'll see things coming along. But there's so, there's so many people that impress me. Jack Scott in your class, uh-huh. under Rapid CDH Kawasaki, well impressed with Jack Scott. Stepped up from the the GP2 class where he was on the one, the Kavara Projects bike last year. And I thought, oh, I don't know how Jack's going to get on there. A couple of incidents throughout the course of the year. But yeah, very impressive. Great end to the year for him on that, that Kawasaki. Very impressive, strong results and young rider coming through. Because that's something that we need in the Superbike Championship. You've you're established, you've been in it for a long time. But I spoke with Tommy Bridewell during the year about this. He goes, you know, I've been at this for 10 years now here. And, you know, it's still you see the same teams, the same people, uh-huh. the same guys. Some of the guys come in and <laughs> struggle a bit. But, you know, you look back and see where's the next draft the guys coming from. And it's mm. like, well, where are they coming from, you know? And when, yeah, when that's, I mean, that's them? why I was quite interested to hear your take on it. Because as I said, it's hard, It's always hard for us because we don't see it all yeah. the coming through. Obviously, we've had this year, we've had some very good rookies. Yeah. Um, you know, Nesbitt and Cook have been... Oh, yeah, really, I, tried, really I didn't talk quite... too much about them because they're in the superbike class. I wanted to try and look no, at no, but I just mean yeah. as in showing that there is talent yeah, coming yeah, through, and yeah. when they do go in superbike, yeah, they're actually doing a really good job. Yeah, I mean, Spud, 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 and Max have this kind of thing. They're Ooh. both Swindon boys, Charlie Nesbitt, 
No, no, no. I mean, who won, the, who won the... Oh, the Rookies Cup. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Max, I Max, Cook. Max Cook. Max won Cook won that, yeah, with his, with his last really good last round. And to be fair, actually, Brad Perry had a really good last couple of rounds. Yeah. But, he had, but he had some really good last couple of rounds. He really... Yeah, totally agree. And a tiny little team <clears> with not a great budget and yeah. uh, just a great gun, bunch of guys who put their heart and soul into it, Lee Hardy. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of time for Lee. I really, I really like Lee, but, you know, that's... That's not a big money operation there at all, and and what they're doing is is is, is cracking to see. And Bradley had a few incidents this year where he, you know he, he crashed a few times and caused a bit of damage, but ultimately over the course of it, got really good towards the end and mm-hmm. and showed strong. But he, he then died his fucking hair. Have you seen him? He, 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 <laughs> see what he did to his hair? No, I haven't seen that. No, nah. I think he'd found his girlfriend's hair dye bottle and just thought, wow, why not? It's his last <laughs> round. <laughs> He looked literally these blonde highlights, and he just it was like, Okay, you're right, son. <laughs> you're having a moment. That's not much to do in the latest yeah. strip bar walk and dye your hair bar when he's Bradley, there. Bradley Pete, he sounds a bit like Guy Martin as well when he talks, don't you think? He's a th- funny kid. I do know yeah. he's a funny kid. Yeah, he's Bradley's, Bradley's funny. Yeah, but um, if he's watching this, the hair's just. It's too much. I'm just jealous, you know. I've got, I've, you, you don't have much grey, do you? How old are you again? What do you mean, oh, too much grey? He's got no grey. What grey. about? No, you've not, have you? Have you, have you got any grey hair done? Why not? <laughs> you've got a hat on, you're hiding it, aren't you? <sighs> See you youngsters, there that's you what it is, you young say, pubs, you, you youngsters. I tell you, um, didn't um, Charlie Nesbitt win the Sunflower as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah, well... From um, Richard Kerr. Yeah, Richard, Richard Kerr won a race as well, though. Hold on. Mm, yeah, Richard Kerr yeah, won, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speak, speaking of Richard Kerr, the uh, Stock Thousand, isn't that still up for... Oh, good one. Yeah. Isn't that still up for questioning at the moment? Isn't I, it being? Isn't I don't it, actually know to tell you the truth. I'm kind of out of the loop on this one. Here, but I'm kind of the world of social media on side of that thing, isn't it? Because it's. I tell you what, that was a championship. You chat between yourself. I wanted to talk about that championship anyway because it's one of my favourite championships because it's the kind of last big big championship I rode in, and you know from what's meant to be a Honda dominated championship, which I mean, there's loads of Hondas here. Mm. I still. Give so much praise to Alistair Seeley. I couldn't I on couldn't, that BMW. I, I couldn't agree more. The fact that I, you know, and that, that should make other people see that I don't need a Honda. Look what look, look at that guy. Yeah, but you, you know, got, look, he's doing on that BMW. You've got the weight advantage of the BMW. Who's never ever been slow. But you know what makes me like fascinated about Seeley is when the sport develops and chassis change and everything like that, and they're always based no over the fastest. And mm-hmm. at that point, you know, like the elbow down, which is nothing new because of Stefan Bradl, um, like Marquez got involved. Yeah. And he says, you have to adapt a new European style elbows, everything adapt. <laughs> Seely does not yeah. hang off the bike at like all. like Mick Grant. And then, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's exactly right. You know, it just totally tucked in and it just shows that, you know, we're talking about car race and the bike race and, and the biggest, the biggest, biggest, biggest difference, and this is probably blatantly obvious to everyone, it's literally the pilot. When you think yeah. about cars, you're stationary, you're yeah. in a seat, you weigh X, you are this tall, yeah, that does not matter. You are in a stationary it's chassis. It's about what car you're in, set up you've got, and what the team have done. The bike has a, an extra thing with the rider input, that exactly. what the rider actually does. You know, you can you could put a you could put a fairly decent car driver. Christian's pretty good at karting. You could put him in a decent car. Who would win in a kart race, by the way? Who'd win in a kart yeah, race, me? Okay. Uh, good. But, Next so, um, you know, I can't you, disagree with that. You could put Christian in a pretty good car. But I'd have a much car, nicer suit. And he would go pretty fast, you know? He would go pretty fast. But you couldn't put some sort of dodgy guy on Christian's bike and expect mm. him to get anywhere near what Christian Yeah, you're a dynamic part of yeah, the you're machinery. You're a huge part of it, you know? <laughs> but then my point with, like, Seely, it's like his style has not changed from the Mick Grant yeah. era and that side of things, but then he can still put the lap yeah. times off. Like, who... <clears throat> Just, in, just in, ge- in general, though, do you not find I find that really interesting? Like, so yeah, if you actually analyze bike race and what's the best way, what is the, the, the in theory there should be a set body position that is yeah. the best, and yet you watch the pinnacle. So let's go MotoGP, and we've got let's go Jorge Martin, who's absolutely yeah. extreme his, in his one chin, respect. His chin is racing, on the ground, racing again. Well, his shoulder is. But well, he's just completely. He literally, he literally he wears, turned. He wears his sponsors off his arm. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. And then you've got Alicia Spargo, who would be your classic style. Yeah. Racing together, and it's actually it's quite interesting because it's not just how you place yourself, but it's also you need to get the feedback from the bike. But it's it's actually quite I find it interesting. One must be it's more a side, physical. It's a side as well. talk, but I find no, it really no, interesting. No. See, I think there must be a physical element in it as well. One must be more tiring than the other one. There must be because when I did a bit of sidecar racing, I was a passionate sidecar, and then um, a well-established sidecar driver came up to me after the free practice and followed me and says, "Stop trying to be a Hollywood 
guy out there and I say, what do you mean Hollywood? He goes, you don't need to be down at that bottom hanger away down there, hanging away over the back. You don't need to do that here. That's just like, you're just styling up and showing off. And I was like, what? Well, that's what you had to do. He goes, no, 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 no. You can just, just lean over the back and plus you'll last more laps. You get tired going down that bottom hand. And I was like, nah, I'll be fine. And it was a 10 lap race on lap six. I was like, blowing at my arms <laughs> and then to try and tap the driver was impossible because I couldn't get my arm forward when <laughs> you're doing so much speed so I thought okay point noted so the physical side of things like dragging your shoulder on the ground on a MotoGP bike alright the guys are really fit but it must be more physical than what Sealy does yeah. you know you but know. I do also think a lot of it is down to also how your physical shape I don't mean physicality no I mean I mean your actual size, size. stature Length leg length back yeah you know yeah, yeah. that sort of thing yeah, like, Alistair's a a guy, see I've watched Alistair get on the bike in the pit lane and they hold the bike for him and he goes tiptoe 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 tip, 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 uh-huh. and somebody pushes him away <laughs> it's the same with the grid he's got, he's, he can't get his feet down because he's so short but I think what he's done this year on that Cinetic BMW has been nothing short of sensational in a sea of Hondas that are proper good little one bike in that garage because they've not had a great super bike program this year the the task guys which has been a great shame but i like them down there good guys in that garage and they uh, seen alistair out there um you know it's, it's been it's been a good year. windmill yeah but the, the, the old park thing was like you know it's <laughs> brilliant of all the people that got rough up i was like alex olsen's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet who looks like a geography teacher never made a bike racer you know <laughs> <laughs> and they're in there and the marshal was pulling them away i thought oh my god but uh, yeah the so I've, got wrapped, I've, yeah. I've, 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 i wasn't playing on my phone i've got the mcrcb statement there's lots of blah 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 that i'm not going to bore you with but basically um it says they wish to investigate the circumstances of a potential irregularities concerning post-race technical control following the national superstock race um it doesn't say who but it's fairly open that it's dan linfoot's bike that's been looked at who is, the was, champion, who is the championship winner mm. i was heading towards garlic at that point <clears throat> yeah. yeah um but yeah so it basically says the results of the race remain provisional until mm. the completion of this process a further statement including the constitution of the tribunal and planned hearing date will follow in due course um that so, that, that aside though how but the, di- the difference but the difference between the, the only i don't think it's ever going to get to that because i don't i don't know what the technical infringement was or whatever but if if it was done because i'm going to caveat everything and if it was Dan won by 34 points. Yeah. But there was 35 points up for grabs. Uh-huh. If Dan got removed from the result, Richard Kerr would win the championship. Right. All right. Because oh, Richard finished second. Mm-hmm. Right. Which right. Would promote him to first. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so it's it got big ramifications. Very there. big yeah. ramifications. Yeah. All right. Okay. <sighs> that was a great class this year, though. Amazing. Oh, man. I mean. And Dan's one of my favourite guys in the world. Yeah. So I was super pumped for him for they, they what he did. They took that down to the last race, the pair of those guys. It was, it, the, I think the points gap was bigger than it should have been, actually. It should have been tighter than that going into that last race. But Richard had an incident at uh, Cadwell Park, which is through no fault of his own. When Ash Beach crashed at the first corner right in front of Richard, Richard did a great job not to run him over. Picked the bike up, ran across the grass, way over to Charlie's, uh, across to Lincoln, wherever it was, <laughs> came back on last and fought his way through to a, a very good, I think it was 10th place, actually. Uh, and but that hurt his championship right there and then. Yeah, and, yeah. And no, but that's that's recent. You know, it's to it's the days when things don't go. You know, things go against. You, you need to get as many points as you possibly can. So, yeah, shame for a, a shame for Richard Kerr to have gone in there with that that points deficit. But I just thought that class this year gave us so much so much great racing through the course of it. The Aprilias are quick as well. Mm-hmm. To see Lewis Rollo, who's my homeboy, my country boy, back up there. <laughs> <laughs> back up there at the sharp end on Ian Newton's big appeal. You went all Braveheart on us then. We were... Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> and, but then uh, Newton brought in Fraser Rogers, who's been off a bike for two years, and Fraser... What a road. Bloody and, Nora. And the, pretty impressive. The, the pap, the pap impressive. Like that, yeah, so we've also got, the, we've got new classes to talk about, and we've had the introduction of Pathway, Pathway. which is coming in yeah. next Pathfinder, year. that's a Nissan truck isn't it that's what I call it there yeah, Pathfinder oh, you the lumberjack did you call it a Pathfinder <laughs> I call it a Pathfinder so the new the, 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 new, path, the new Superbike class that's going to be integrated within Superbike yeah. is the Pathway class it's a I think it's designed not I think it's actually designed to try and bring teams into the championship not necessarily riders but to teams that are maybe just struggling to bridge that gap so essentially the premise is that a Pathway bike and I might be wrong but I'm pretty sure the rules are pretty much it's a stock bike it's like Superstock with, Plus with, with Motec yeah. And with that's a good um, way of it. with brakes, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, a better Bra- brakes. brakes and all, all but, bikes have brakes, but they have better yeah, brakes. But they've got the bigger, they've got the option, the option to run the bigger brakes if they want to. Yeah, I believe that's which what I it think is. they will. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and Christ almighty, Fraser Rogers arriving on that Aprilia, who has been out racing for Gordon knows how long, done a couple of races on the super stock side of things, and then Ian, Ian Newton gave Lewis Rollo the chance, the opportunity first, if he wanted to go pathway, and Lewis said, well, I'd rather finish the year in stock and get my championship position mm-hmm. and do it. And Fraser had nothing to lose. He came in at Alton Park. He had an Alton Downton in the stock class and jumped in. I was so impressed with how he what went. What a run he had. Uh, but also, yeah, in the wet at, at Downton, Franco Bourne was 10th. Alex Olsen was putting the lap times that almost put him through to Q2. At yeah, yeah, so in, in Pathway, we had we had Franco, we had Alex, Alex Olsen, we had Sean Winfield, we had uh, Fraser. Fraser Rogers. So they were the four brands. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. And, and all acquitted themselves really well. Very good. And, and I mean, what a great way to introduce <coughs> them into the superbike class at a more affordable spec of bike. Because effectively, Alex Olsen, the IWR, e Wallaco Racing, Cummins Honda, they did what you said, the electronics and brakes. But it's not just that easy, as you know. It never is, is It's it? not just that easy because I spoke with James Buckingham. I said, so how's it going? He was like, oh, God. You know, it's it's, it's we're tr- we've got engine braking issues. And I was like, okay, is it anything like what you've had before? He goes, completely different. The bike acts completely different when you put the Motec on it. Mm. Well, I, I, did, I did have a chat with Arad. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. And I was like, how is it? And he was like, my bike's a turd. I'm not going to say <laughs> I said that. <laughs> did, <laughs> that's going to get cut. <laughs> that is, that is going to get cut. Of the, the, best, the, be, the best thing is, Grace, bleep that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, so, yeah, just, just the name. You can leave the rest in. So, <laughs> and we'll be trying to like filter it to see what the name was. <laughs> but, yeah, so basically, I don't know if those on the outside fully, re- you know, outside of racing fully realise, but you changed the electronics package. Mm. And it completely changes that bike. The, f- the whole DNA, the whole fundamentals of that bike completely yeah. changes. And, and this this unnamed rider. <laughs> the... Two beats. <laughs> You're a bad man, Duncan. <laughs> You're a bad man. I love it. But he said the same to me. No, I know. <laughs> no, he's not, he's not disputing that. It's the fact yeah. that you're passing okay. him on the show. All right. yeah, but <laughs> We're the, trying to get him on the show. All right. The thing I feel sorry for him is because the week before, he had a bike that had him in the top three. Yeah. And that shows mm. you just how much you we take that off. We put that on. Ah, what's going on? Yeah. It's a different, it's a completely different bike. Because because I do actually think, as much as I think it's designed to bring teams in, I do think it's, it's probably not a bad stepping stone for riders because I do believe that we see a lot of riders that can ride the stock bike really well. And then mm-hmm. sometimes struggle to make that step up, yeah. Because the suit bike is as much as it's the same bike; it's not even close to being the same bike. No, no. And trying to find that feel. I mean, we've seen Franco, who's I think done fantastic, but it, genuinely, I think if totally he raced agree. his stock bike, even with stock tires in It'd the suit bike, yeah. he probably would have been quicker yeah, yeah. than he was on his official Honda, because it's they're difficult to ride. And actually, a lot of times if, I genuinely believe that would be the case. If, if you've got to watch because the stock bikes actually got more safety like it's got more um things on it than you you basically yeah, you know, they, it's, they, got, they, it's got trash control on it mm-hmm. for a start it's got these things paul bird the great late great paul bird said to me he goes you've got to watch with the super stock bikes and you guys can't stay in that class for too long or they become wholly devoted to using that 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 trash yeah, control used to it i go so what do you do he goes well if i look for young riders coming through i look at super sport and i almost don't really look at that class if they've been in there too long I because the, the, hand- the trans for the transfer of the super bike is difficult from that, but Alex Olsen has had superbike yeah. um, experience, working, experience yeah. in the past. My God, yeah, thank thank goodness he's okay after yeah, what happened to him mm-hmm. at Silverstone. But you know, and so has Franco. So Franco's had the year, the bit of the year, and Fraser Rogers had a tiny, tiny bit of superbike stuff. If yeah, Gear Link he rode for yeah. at one point. Yeah, yeah. So Fraser, I think a few others as well. But yeah, and Sean Winfield as we know. So these are guys who have had superbike experience who are jumping in there and they're trying to dial a pathway bike in. And they're saying, you know, it's it's just not easy. But it's I think it's great for the teams to to step up there. I know that AMD were looking at it. I know that um, well, we've always Optimum had we're looking had, at it. We've had McConnell and Van Sickle Russ have been oh, yeah, they're, announced, they're announced already. Yeah. That's an interesting on the, pairing, by on, the way. Yeah, the CNL Fairburn. That's pretty cool actually to yeah. bring to, for those two. Billy coming back into it and Van Sickle Russ I, I like jumping G- up. GVS. He's he's a good guy, Jamie. Yeah. GVS. Oh, I didn't I didn't you, know. You can we see that. it quicker. Oh yeah. In a race. <laughs> you know the flying <laughs> I was a bit worried about saying his name anyway, because I'm thinking, is this right? I was looking at you as, if, you I'd, as if I'd pronounced on it. Right. Go, then. What Jamie Van Sickle Russ? That will that'll do for me, yeah. That's fine, yeah. JVS, yeah. good guy, great guy. Yeah, JVS. Yeah. <laughs> MPM Routes Racing Yamaha, lovely chap. Ridden by JVS. It's a lot of the <laughs> letters whole, in that. The whole, um, the whole pronunciation thing was something I got picked up on and <laughs> given a hard time about as well. It's not easy. There are a few names that sometimes you do 
inherently get wrong, you know, and it's not. Yeah, but you're going, Scottish, <coughs> you're going to get away with it, son. Yeah, but I'm not, no, you know, social media, as you guys know, social media doesn't let away with anything. <laughs> but, but that does bring us quite nicely on because we've got, there's a bit of a rumour mill thing going on at the moment. Here. All our listeners love rumour mill, don't they? Oh, they do. Like they love rumour. They're, they're all about silly it. season rumour mill. It's not, not rumour about me, is it? No, <laughs> not that kind of rumour. <laughs> so okay. it was Snapchat. <laughs> Street <laughs> with when you weren't at university. <laughs> Your other kids have arrived. <laughs> okay, help me with your rumour. What are you hear? No, no, you, uh, oh, you, you're going to hear us with your rumour. Yeah, what you're hearing? <gasps> you see, because uh, we, we, we're getting some movers and shakers starting to get people sign up and getting announcements and all. We've touched on the main ones that have happened. Did previously. I just hear that Glenn's come out and said that he's um, staying with PBM? But the, the, some, my, I was told that I'm not killed today. It was news to me. Oh, right. Yeah, news to uh, me. Okay, yeah, so, so there yeah. you go. That was news right. to me. Fully announced by Duncan. No, 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 no. But that's no, but that's a rumor. You know, that was, hear one thing yeah. from that side of the paddock, it and it's totally a, different by the end yeah, of it. Some, isn't? Somebody in the Nokia Circuit office uh, was it? Maybe <laughs> let's not. Was under the bus here, but was it? Maybe <laughs> said that to me. Today? I can't remember. We'll, can, we'll can beep it out. Beep that out, Grace. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of beeping. I'm not sure. I love it. But I think I heard that. What other rumors? What rumors have I heard? So if you've heard about Glenn, what have you heard about Tommy? I haven't heard anything about Tommy actually. Yeah, but Tommy because our new champion. I heard. I heard that. The well, you had Jordan in here, you know, and I listened to that podcast. It was fabulous. I'm a big fan of Jordan Bird. I, I love oh, her and Frank. An outstanding job. You know, I'd, I'd like to talk about the whole Birdie thing after after the rumor thing, if we can. Yeah, if yeah, 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 yeah. Guys. Your um, with um, uh, I do know that they couldn't actually sign a rider because Paul was still like the main director of the company, so they couldn't actually sign anybody for 2024. I believe. I think that was the reason. <clears throat> right. So I think that's to kind of wait, but I think there was some sort of. I think they've obviously had a chat with the rider. Mm-hmm. Chris not going to chat with them. You know, you got the the champion oh, but- first and second in the championship. What a great year! And people say it's a bounce back year for PBM. You know, they were they were only they were never really really away. I mean. You you were a star when you, when you were there for them. I have to say, and, and, and that's when the bike was shite. That's when the bike was shite, obviously. Yeah, and you you made that bike <laughs> ten things better than what it was. But see, when I heard that you, um, see I when was I heard polishing. See when I heard that you were. It wasn't bad way. It was a great bike. It was a great bike. It was a great bike. The DBM don't do bad. Bikes. No, I know. That's one I thing. Don't do bad. It anything. was shite. Look, but, I, no, it when, wasn't. It was great. <laughs> when when I heard that you this year were on a Ducati, um, I, I tipped you for the championship actually because. Because of what you'd done the previous time, I'd seen you in the cat and the vision track PBM bike. I think you're brilliant on that. You went into the last race at Brands Hatch that year you were there with a genuine championship. Mm-hmm. You genuinely shot the championship. But when I saw you this year in the cat, I thought, oh, this is going to be interesting. It, I, I I hope you get another year with that team. I, I think a second year will be perfect for you there. Is that talking to me? No, I'm oh, to I, 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 sorry. Are you, is that, is that, Likely to oh, I just like to keep the, the suspense going. See, we're, we're, we're he's, just, he's, just ch- he's just churning the rumour mill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like um, it. It adds to the fun, doesn't it? I have heard. But Lee, Lee, Lee Jackson's an interesting one. Well, he That's raced. So we just one. talked about the Sunfly. He raced the Hawk bike. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> at the Sunfly. But I've also heard rumours about him in a Yamaha. So that I've was heard, a seat, by the way. That was my, that, in case the microphone <laughs> picked it up. There's, there's quite strong rumours at the moment about a Yamaha run by Shaky with involvement from a previous team owner, manager. Right. So there's potential of a new team coming in. Right, well, I heard that... Because was... obviously the McCams sold up. Yeah. So there's two... There's basically a whole team structure going. Mm-hmm. That was... I believe it was purchased by OMG. Yeah. But not Dom. I'm pointing to Dom there. Yeah. <laughs> Real chat. <cheddar. laughs> Real chat. Imagine it. Just, just, got the never, never. just got the swift half mil just to buy. <laughs> yeah. What's the monthly payment on that? <laughs> it's a few sick of ones. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that they were going to run a third bike. Now, this came randomly in the paddock to me that the OMG were going to run a third bike for Lee Jackson. I thought, wow, that's interesting. But then I, I saw him riding the Hawk bike at uh-huh. Sunflower. And then, you know, he, he rode well this year. Uh, he's, just, he's a kind of very safe pair of hands, isn't he? He doesn't cause do you, a lot of damage. Do you know what's, you know what's quite impre- in, in, interesting about Lee? He is he's quite a quiet character, and actually, not just in the way, not just in his demeanour, but his results often go unnoticed. Because mm-hmm. even I didn't realise, and bear in mind, I raced in that championship against him. I didn't realise he's now finished fourth twice in a row in the championship. You know how many races he finished this year? Well. Probably every single one. Yeah, I think I think it was maybe maybe only one DNF he had. I need to go back. I did look at records before I came down here, but I did look at stuff. But uh, 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 he's one of the most consistent riders mm-hmm. in, in the championship. But I think a change will do him good. 
I, I think a change will do him good. I think trying a different manufacturer, being in a different environment. He's been with FSC for so long, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I think sometimes a, a change, as Cheryl Crow says, a change is good for you. A change will do you good. When's the last time a Kawasaki won a championship at BSP? Was Shaky. it Shaky, Yeah. No, was it um, Haslam? No, he never won the championship. Did he? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Beep that out. Sorry. Yes. Bomb, no, no, we're not beeping that out. Yeah, yeah. Because he should have won it one year and didn't. And then. Yes. Was he yeah. the last one? Wasn't he? Yeah. Paul Bird, he won it. Paul Bird with the Shaky Burton. Yeah. On the Kawasaki. Then it was. Uh, when the hell was that then? Shaky and Rat Boy. Was it the, the, on the Rapid? Rapid, so rapid yeah. So I don't know what year Leon was then. Christian, get your phone out. I get your phone. No, but like, but like you say, it's a bit like, is the bike still competitive? Oh, uh, well, you know, you have new Yamaha, you have so. the Hondas, you, you but look, then... Are any of the bikes new though? Look at the uh, World Championship. Uh, I mean, Kawasaki, are, Kawasaki are not uh, stalling on their, their development, are they? Uh, I think the Baza in World Superbike, the Bassani Kawasaki tyre, I think that's really interesting for Axel Bassani to go there, uh, leaving Ducati to go there after Jonathan's gone to Yamaha and Top Brack's gone to, to BMW. A lot of shuffling about there, but... Um, from all accounts, Jason O'Halloran's had a test already on that 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 completely motivates Kawasaki as it'll be for uh, for twenty twenty four with FS three. Darren and Nigel are they're, stu they're you know they're, they're clever guys. They're very very good at what they do. And I I've heard that Jason liked the bike, loved the bike, and he rode the bike. With he has the to say that. Yeah, well, now, I know, but you're going to you're also going to hear the truth, aren't you? It's a, it's a winter test. Yeah. He rode the bike with the Ka Kawasaki factory swinging arm. Yeah, because so there was a lot of straight into that. displeasure yeah. between the riders. Yeah. They weren't. They got this factory swing arm, which usually you go, oh, mint, factory yeah. swing arm. And actually, I think they persevered with it. And I think they, towards the second part of the, part of the season, I'm not sure about Max's side, but I know that Lee was sort of to and fro in between. Lee them. went back to the suitor and raised yeah. the suitor swinging mm -hmm. arm because he knew it and he was comfortable and he got good results in it. Yeah. 2018, by the way, for Leon. Well done. 2018, Bournemouth Kawasaki. Um, Whereas Max Cook raced the uh, Max Cook raced the KRT swinging arm uh, from from when it arrived. Mm. He said it felt and stuck more with like, it. Yeah, it? he stuck with it all year. He said it felt more like a, a race bike. Bear in mind, he comes from uh, Moto Three kind of kind of background, so he he he's used to this rigid rigid bike. So um, there was a bit of two and a fro in the garage, and one you, and easy to tell the difference. One was a silver swinging arm. One was a black swinging arm. The silver's a suitor, the black's a KRT one. Yeah. I tell you what, Max Cook made me laugh, mine, because um, Alan Garner has a, um, an auction, like for charity every yeah. year, and <laughs> Max was there buying all the broken bits. Was he? He was for his collection. He was like paying his own money to buy the bits. All his Probably, bits. You know, the bent wheels, the fairings. Oh God, was he? he was there putting his own money in, buying it back. <laughs> was it his bits he was buying? I it was the bus bits because they were like auctions. <laughs> they had like J.S. O'Halloran's like uh, bus fairings and everything like that. You know, people chuck in. It's for a good cause. And he does yeah. it every year. Wow. And there's Max Cook going, I'll have my wheels. I'll have this. And some bloke outbidded him. Cool. Oh, Je um, Aaron Jeff's dad. I bought the wheel. He was like, I think you're trying to haggle it back and stuff like that. It was great crack, lad. But like... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine buying a bike for a bike, and that, when you're your own. Yeah, when you yeah, you could have just gone. I'm telling you now, he was there. Yeah, it was it was, it was good crack. Good that kid, was good, good kid, fast kid, good future. I've got I've got a cracking cracking question. It's got yeah. a, it's this is actually Christian's question from when we first had you on your pod with Chrissy. It's like, uh, who's your outside bet for next year? Because we know Tommy Tommy oh, he, Bridewell's coming back in. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so Tommy Bridewell's coming back. He's running the number one plate. He said that. Is he in coming the, back? We haven't actually. Yeah. We haven't well, no, actually. He said, well, he said in his is this interview. A no, no, no. He said this in his interview. Like I, I was listening to TSL on the way home, and I think it was um, Larry Carr actually. You know, put the microphone underneath him. Oh yeah, the and real scoop guy. Scoop got the scoop there. <laughs> but no, but, scoop. no, but he, no, but he stood there and he said, "If anyone's wondering if I'm going to run number forty-six or number one, he said I'm going to run the number one." Place. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, I you know, did he, hear that because yeah. he said that he said there was Bravali who he dedicated the race yeah. to and said, "Look, you know, if I'm going to run number one, you know, it's, it's fair." I for like his brother. That. I like. He's I want to see the number one. Me there. too. Like, there's been a bit of chat on the group chat about you know if if whoever won the championship would what would you run? Yeah. And I do. I like to see the one. You want that, to see the one. Everybody wants to see the one. It's nice that people have their favourite numbers and that. But as an outsider, I want to see the one. When I'm racing, I want to race against the number one as well. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to beat the number one in the timesheets. So the number one's behind me in the timesheets. I, I, you want to beat the guy that's the best. <laughs> but like, it's kind of a funny one because, like, obviously with Tommy, he's got a very strong connection to that number for yeah very clear reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, and other riders might have strong connections with their numbers for whatever reason. But yeah, for me personally, it's like one of those things where. 
you work all your career to get the opportunity to run that number and then you'd well, be like what you should, do you think right? it should be mandatory oh 100 run number one yeah good man good man but i think i, I, think, think, I, I think i think what's different no, but, in, no, but do you reckon it should be mm. yeah but what happens now seeing like motor gp world superbike the, the top real top tier riders it's their brand the number is the brand yeah and the font, the font and is the brand yeah, yeah. so they actually so they, they don't want to have to go back to it and then return back to a number yeah yeah exactly so they may come in and take the number yeah Make sure that side of it. I'll be it? straight into number twenty-one. <laughs> Steal it. <laughs> Take it away. No, but, no, if but I was like, one, I wouldn't like, care. Who's my outside bet? Who was for, your for, for, for twenty-four? For twenty-twenty-four, 2024. could be this guy sitting here. He's in the same bike. Uh, it could also. It could also. I mean, the, the Lamy OMG boys. Ryan Vickers' first year on the Yamaha what a year, was yeah. something yeah. Like, yeah. nothing yeah. short of sensational. Uh, Ryan was known for being a bit of a crasher, wasn't he? And he crashed a lot of bikes for Lee Hardy, um, and through very clever management through Roger Burnett. And I think one of the main things that's really sorted him out this year is Roger Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Roger Marshall was such a such a key key man in Ryan Vickers' armory. I I think that Ryan Vickers next year or his teammate Kyle Reid is a is a good three pound four pound bet. Not going to go five of them. You are Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet that bit short bet on it, but Karen, I, I think Karen. I think that's a pretty pretty good outside. I mean, that's mm. probably not an outside bet, to tell you the truth, is it? But they'll, the, they'll get good odds on Ryan Vickers. This is the thing when Christy had first brought this question to the show. It was like, actually, how the hell are any of these lads outside yeah. bets? You yeah. know what I mean? But that is the thing with BSB. Though, like you think that much depth. You, you say, yeah, there's the, there is that literally that much yeah. depth, and you look into it and you're like, well, it's probably 15 riders that can at least win yeah. races. There's, there's 10 that could. Charlie if, if, things, if things land right, there's probably 10 that can win a championship. Max Cook then. Max Cook as your outside bet. Yeah, Charlie, 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 Charlie Nesbitt, Nesbitt for me because that. If, I, 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 a lot of people gave me a hard time on social <laughs> media saying you're forgetting Charlie Nesbitt's a rookie this year. I was, I'm not forgetting he's a rookie. I know he's a rookie. If Charlie can stop on the damn thing a little bit more, he will be he'll be freaky fast. Nah, but the, the you know thing, he will be so so fast on that hawk that hawk. It's going to say Kawasaki. That's a flag flag. <laughs> yeah, on that hawk Honda. And, uh, you know, omelettes and eggs, that's an expensive omelette, didn't get us wrong, but it's omelettes and eggs, though, isn't it? You know what I mean? He's pushing the limits. Yeah, I know, I just don't want him to hurt himself, though. So maybe maybe taking that 1% right, back will keep him on it and get him more points. Some points are better than no points. But you know what? Bloody good outside bet for the championship as well. Spud, Max. I'm putting a fiver on it, and I don't even have a fiver. I mean, the other the other, <laughs> the other, the other com- um, confirmed one that we've got is Danny Kent on the, on the Mar train bike. Oh, and, and he that. went and raced it. At the Sunflower. The Sunflower. Got it's, it's kind of a difficult one because like, he'd never been around Bishop's Court as far as I'm aware and he hadn't ridden the bike before that weekend. So it's not easy. I feel sorry for Jack Kennedy, by the way. I do. I don't think... I, I thought... Do we know where he's going? I, I don't. I don't. I, I would imagine... I heard something maybe about the Triumph thing for Jack. Well, the thing is hard in it that turning him from between yeah. Superbike and Supersport. Jack just Jack's had a good year this year, and I, 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 th- year, I think yeah. Martin have had a good year as well. I think that I thought he would have got a second year with that, but they've obviously thought that they want to do something else. It's fine. They want to go in a different direction, but the way Martin have performed and the way Jack's performed, I think it was pretty level across the board. But from an outside looking in, you don't know what's going on with the data in the garage. You don't know the actual real crux of the matter. But because uh, Martrain have really changed in their structure, so they've yeah got some 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 of the McCams guys. good guys from yeah. McCams, and yeah, they've really changed the structure. They're they're, they're going pretty. Haven't said they're that. going in deep with it. I, I just I sh- I would, I'd see if they could have run two bikes. Wow, that would have been mega. That well, that's been, the other. I did hear that rumor. That would have been because uh, I did turn up at, at Brands, and someone said. I've heard you're riding the second March train bike. I was like, well, one, I didn't know there was a second March train bike. <laughs> Are you? Or that I was on it. So, <laughs> Isn't that nice when people talk about you like that? It's quite, nice it, it is actually, quite, flattering, it's actually huh? quite funny, some of the things that people tell me that I'm doing. It is, it is funny. How many times have you said yes? Yeah. No, but they go, oh, oh, you're, no. you're riding the... And I'll go, yeah, 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 I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be straight to the forward, just bump in. <laughs> Lightning's, right, Lightning's riding that bike. Do you know what's them. the funniest thing? Like, is you get... Like you get like people that I don't have a clue who they are on the Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is, and you get like this run. You know, but no, a genuine like random and they go, "What are you doing next year?" Oh, right. <laughs> hello, Barry. I've never met you, but I'm um... Barry. Glad you no, got in no, touch. No, nobody else knows this. Second name Soap. <laughs> but you seem a nice guy. This is what I'm doing. Barry Soap. <laughs> It's a Barry clean, soap. clean Barry soap. What the hell's Barry soap? So, so something you watch soap. yourself, is it not? A bar of soap. <laughs> a bar. <laughs> it's like a fake name that's clean rather than Mike Oxbig. You never met Mike? <laughs> no. I don't want to either. No. Or, or Mr. Peacock. Drew Peacock, you know? You never heard those fake names, so. <laughs> 
Danny Kent will be interesting next in the Yamaha because I thought he was punching way above his weight in that little LKR Honda this year. Yeah. I didn't see him I mean, he the out, first race he, of the year. He, so he outrode the other the official Honda team by yeah. I'm not just, even close. I'm just so surprised that he wasn't a signed up Honda rider from round four or five onwards. I thought he would I thought that Harvard had jumped to, to get him in to that team. That, you know? Yeah, I mean I think like that was Danny's team in conjunction with a, a, a main sponsor. Yeah. So I think jumping ship would have been difficult. No, 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 no. I didn't no not jumping ship, but expecting him for twenty twenty four to be oh, grabbed at Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'd think, wow, we've got something special, somebody can ride this Honda and he was he was Pretty, I mean, I think we're all very lucky with what happened at Thruxton that he fell off the other side of the bike and he didn't come the side of Jack hit. But that was... Uh, that was close. Yeah, what, the rear shock mountain had, had broke or something. Yeah. It was just... <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, whatever. terrifying. And uh, and Thruxton's a fast place, but uh, Jack Jack and and, uh, and Danny both very, very lucky with that one. I mm. think. So that's all I, that's all I got inside I don't know gossip. If, no, I tell okay. you what, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a, like a rumour that I've heard, oh, right? Yeah. The rumour that I've heard is people Don't haven't taken the a biggest, biggest interest in the sports bike class yet. Well, they haven't. Haven't taken the biggest interest. You mean there's right. not been much uptake? Yeah. I did, do you know what? I saw a really cool... No, but... I saw a really cool picture of one of them Suzuki... Are they ARs or whatever they're called? Yeah, yeah. RS8. I don't know. RS8L? The Suzuki thing that's yeah. eligible for that sport yeah, bike twin, class. Twin one, yeah. Proper cool. Because you've, you've got the Kawasaki's, the ERs, you've got the R7s, you've got... it's, it's like, Suzuki's. Uh, it's going to be interesting because how long stock 600 been going? You know what I mean? It's People don't people don't like change. And it's like, you know, we were talking about, like, people do not like change. And I think when this gets going, it'll be very, very interesting. And it'll be... There isn't an age cap because in stock 600 there was an age yeah. cap is that 25 yeah and if you won the championship was it 25 and if you won the nope. championship you had to the top three was it top three moved on i think yeah yeah there or was actually legislation yeah. like that development top element of it. and i think it's 16 upwards See, i've heard there's quite a few bikes being sold for it i know that there's quite a few bikes um i know kieran kent's got a bike ready to go i'm pretty sure Ian newton was telling me he's had quite a bit of interest in it so good I do hope it does pick off and does does take up. It'll be it'll be interesting interesting to see. Because it is it like you know when you think like the fact of like you're dissolving one class yeah. and restarting another. That is that is the strength of a championship and they're, they're bold moves, yeah. isn't it? You know, they're, when you are dissolving something the, and go, the championship's making some big moves, you know, like that's as, what in, I mean, as yeah. in BSP as a whole, we've got the new is it the super teen style? Super teen for the ZX four RR Kawasaki. Yeah, so like a one make yeah. youth class, should we say? Which like I think's great. A development class. I love I used to love the super teen. Scotland had a great success <coughs> in super teen through the years and you know, who knows we might get another couple. But uh, I think Super Teen will be brilliant. And and, and it makes it a bona fide one make championship. Yeah. Because that's effectively what the Hell Performance British Junior Super Sport Championship it was it was yeah all kawasaki's but you could you could look at three hondas uh-huh. uh, three yamaha sorry mm. so it was almost a one make championship so why not do something different and make these these little zx4 rrs are lovely lovely little bikes they're all going to be built by nick morgan at mss they do look class man. and this the little little screamers you know that, that that's that's going to be a great little class the super teens and for for youngsters to come through and and cut their teeth and and away they go after that it'll be a good one to watch that that'll be good i'm looking forward to that one but it will, it, like, like, but I really hope that was just a rumor that I've yeah. heard, though. You know what I mean? But I think people want to go racing, period. But then you've just got to, you've got to go with that. Now, speaking of which, let's talk about Navarra. Yeah. You know, the dissolved Silverson. Yeah. Are you good about that, Christian, or not? Or are no, you good about that? I'm no? not because the the Silverstone that we ran is it's got the three corners. It's terrible. Yeah, there we are. You know, it's yeah. not a to me. It's not a. We're not racing around Silverstone. We're racing around a bit of Silverstone. Yeah. You know, there was um, there was some talks about trying to extend the bit of track that we were going to race on, mm. but they do have a lot of issues. They have the FIM, FIA, the curbing that they have for mm. the cars is, it has to be kept and it has to be, you can't run over right. them and they can't remove them. So where we were, that where it was planned to try and do a bit of extra track, because it was not feasible for us to go back to the long track, which is a real shame. Um. But they, yeah, so the extra track would probably would have made it a raceable circuit. But yeah, I'm not going to miss the little triangle. Not one bit. I'll miss the facilities. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to have a toilet in the garage <laughs> when you're desperate just before you go out. What are you going to miss about Silverstone, Christian? <laughs> the bog. Do you think, I mean, no, Brand, no, to, be fair, to be fair, has that. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Brands has that because it has a sink in every... <laughs> in a every... sink, Dave. <laughs> oh, you don't. <laughs> Please tell me you when you got it when you got a course on. At, at Brands, at Brands at the last round there was a, there was like I don't know what it was but there was something in the sink I think it was a stone, 
And my basically my whole goal for the weekend was to just by the power of piss <laughs> get the stone <laughs> down the plug hole. <laughs> and a few times it was playing on my mind. I thought I need to just go and try. But As he's going into Hawthorns. I'm sorry. I'm but sorry. then but then I'd go in and not have the pressure because I hadn't built up. I just uh... wanted to go and try and go a bit further. When you were but I did it in the end, and it, I let out a little whoop, and obviously everyone in the garage must think, "What the hell is he doing?" And is your core sink. strength that that good? <laughs> <laughs> you can power piss. <laughs> you like, it's, it's, it's only all weekend. Have you ever heard it of the bad? Do you snip you it ever, and build it up and then? Poof. Have you ever heard right of the bad tenacious D? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, you know the cock push up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just lay like, on the I ground. Can, can, <laughs> the cock, like, how many can you do? Like, you only need to do one. one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I've watched one of your boys wash his teeth in that toilet. I can't say I've never tried to do the cock push-up. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, man. Listen, I mentioned, so, I mentioned Birdie. I need to say... I need, yes. I know. Yeah. yeah, please take us away from this line. I need to bring you away from the cock push-up and, and whatever you were doing in that sink. That's really bizarre. I hope MSV are listening to that. In Navarra, they'll be keeping a proper eye yeah. on you. Oh, like, no, sorry, oh, sorry right. yeah, we missed the yeah, Navarra. Nav- sorry, yeah, Navarra. <laughs> we missed the whole question. <laughs> Navarra. Was it, no, Navarra are only go like Navarra BSB, they're only going with a handful of classes. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, Superbike, Super Sport. Super sport. Uh, and, oh. The F900 yeah, you're going. and yeah, you're British. Going. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing it next year. Well, okay, your class is going. So, yeah, the, 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 F, the F900. I've got a picture go. of who's going, actually, if you want me to dig through my phone for a minute. So that is... And also, Four. actually, we said Silverstone's off, but I think there's some classes going to the MotoGP. Yes, that's on the cards, isn't Stock it? Stock thousands yeah. going to MotoGP. Mm-hmm. So, like, like you say, like it's BSB for God's sake that we're talking about here. They do, a, like, they do an amazing job, like juggling everything around how they do it. But uh, why only the four rounds? Like, sorry, four rounds. Four, four uh, championships. Four championships. I think, going the, in I think well, it's the two day event for a start. It's, it's not the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's only Saturday, Sunday. But then you've got the two day test. Yeah, you've got two. Day, and I think it must be down. They must be looking at budgets for. I think for, it's budget. It's got to be. Because hmm. you know, for to take the to take all the classes, that's a that's a big hit at the start of the year. I think I think there's probably multifaceted, but budgeting will probably be the main one. Yeah. Mm. But also, if you think that's going to be their first big event that they're going to run there. It's not a bad thing to have a soft entry to what. Oh yeah, no, no. Do you know what I mean? Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I I'm quite trying like to find the it. idea because it because basically, we, yeah, we have a test there. The way that they've done the the weekend is we. I think I, I don't remember exactly the days, but it's basically we ride Tuesday, Wednesday, have Thursday, Friday off, and then race Saturday, Sunday. So actually, we only do two races at that one. Yeah, Superbike. We normally do three. Yeah, normally three is two, but it's just two. So. But obviously, we've had a lot of track time to start with, so we have less practice, but we have already practiced. Yeah, so there was- there's there's a lot of li- there's a really strong stranglehold on how much testing we can do pre season. Yeah, and it is a much later start to the year than hmm. it's ever been. I don't think you're allowed to test even before you turn up to Navarra. Oh, really? Or the first official, whatever the first the, the date of the first official test. I think you're I think not allowed on a bike 16th. before then. No, yeah. I think it's Donington. Yeah, oh, there is one at Donington. Yeah, yeah, there's one at Donington. Is mm, I was going to say seventh of May, but that's where. So that's the it? first time you lads, the superbike lads, can get out on track. Mm. Is on a superbike. All oh, right, which will be pretty chilly. Oh, here we go. I found it. But so, now that you're riding for Martry and you'll be getting stuck Yamaha. Yeah? Nevada, <laughs> go, going to Nevada, we've got the the British superbikes, the Benish British superbikes, the Quadra Group British Super Sport and GP2. We've also got the RNG British Talent Cup, which is going to go over with us. And Dom, you're going over as well with your BMWs. I've just told you I might not be doing it. <laughs> so the F, F- and, and, as, and as a track, like we both rode it last mm. year. Um, sorry, I'm just finishing off a biscuit. I was going to suck yeah, it no, in case you could hear of, it. I've got a bit of the forehead do I think, actually. <laughs> but the... Um, What's it like? What's it like to ride? It's going to be a lot better. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a bit tight and twisted. I don't know if you agree with me, Don, but it's like, the, 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 it was like... The first gear. First gear was... Uh, well, Half I, the track. I only got seven laps, but even I, <laughs> like first gear, first gear, first gear, there was a lot. Really? Okay. But they've, like, to be fair to MSV, they have, they're putting in a lot of work. I've seen yeah. some plans that we've been oh, shown, and there's really? a lot, there's some heavy modification going on. Oh, they don't, They don't mess about. You know, that's one thing with MSV, the MSVR, they don't mess about. If they're yeah. going to do something, it's going to be good. We're going to go there. Because the facility is fantastic it anyway. Is. Like the the pit boxes have yeah. their own toilets, the the the, the lay like the layout is phenomenal. Like, yeah, you know, and like, I know it was a lot of first gears, but like the, you could make the even if they didn't change anything. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of first gears, mm-hmm. but you could have made that work. Yeah, you okay. know what I mean. There's well, actually we'll run off and will two bike race there exactly. And like yeah, the true, landscape true. and everything. E- even as it was, it was more than raceable. But yeah, I've seen some plans and it looks cool. Cool. So it'll be really good. It will be really good. And, 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 and I think there's probably been. Oh, I think there's probably been a fair split 
in terms of fans about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, which I kind of get because it's not as accessible as going to the first round at, say, Silverstone or wherever else they decide to run it. But I do kind of understand why the championship would decide, decide to do it. And yeah, I, th- I, I think, think it's good. I think they've made a good call because it's not the first European round that they've ever, ever introduced, <laughs> no, 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 no. you know, with the Assen element. But it's the beginning of the year. You know what I mean? If you're going to be a BSB fan, you know what I mean? Why wouldn't you go watch it in the sunshine earlier in the year? Yeah. I mean, how much is a flight from London to Bilbao? You know, or, or, or Manchester or something like that. It's not going to be that expensive. No, probably cheaper than driving from Fife to yeah. Silverstone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell of a lot shorter as well. I, t- I tell you what, before we go down your, the poor bird, yeah. element, I must thank you so much. Like the first guest who's driven to us, so thank you. Yeah, but I was honestly, local, th- so. no, no, no. Thank you so much for driving down here. Yeah, honestly, cool. we we cannot thank you enough. Well, when Grace said that they were putting on a spread and you know, there's going to be biscuits, and is this is this a, not a normal thing for biscuits to be here? No, just for you, just for wow. you. Well, I've, I've only had one. And Karen Rouse, the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate mother. Period. It's Fabulous. the fact of like is in there. Villain, like, yeah. Oh, it's just like I've just put something small out. It's just small. It's just, no, honestly, <laughs> through the food. <laughs> oh my god! When it's did like, you? When did it? When did you first meet Chrissy? Oh, when did I first meet Chrissy? Oh, um, I don't know. Long time ago, not kill long time ago when he was doing a little bike, probably. I don't, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, the first time I met Chrissy, Christ, I don't know. His appetite time. that was barely a starter for the lad. You <laughs> know what I mean? It's really? the, only, the only thing that was quicker than his lap times was his eating capability. God. My god, he could like that would have been a mere, you like, know, honestly. And he, yeah. was the, he was the size of a bloody stick, man. And the, the food he could shovel down him, it was just like, how the... You know, <laughs> it, it, so you, slim. you know, the thing is, we're all competitive. You know, we're all competitive by nature. And I even got to the point, I was trying to overfeed myself to try and beat him in food. He didn't know I was racing him. But I was like, I'm like, I'm like sitting there going, right, here we go. Today is the day and you beat like a Subway and you just you'd get like a mega meal and <laughs> So like, are you done? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> Boof, off you go. And you'd still beat me every get time. Yeah. Face. Honestly, His dad oh, used yeah. to make bacon rolls for me and my, my good friend, Graham Padel, not killing Dennis Hobbs. He'd be making us bacon rolls in the comp to do a bit of racing. You know, we could have probably gone from the cafe, but he was like, no, here you go. Here's a, here's a bacon roll. It's, it's fabulous. Five-star treatment from uh, from Chrissy when he come up. Me and Chrissy actually, uh, at that, that unfortunately fateful Donington weekend, we spoke in the, in the morning of it and he was he was speaking about the, coming on the podcast and it was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I think he'd lined Shaky up that very weekend as well. He spoke to me about it and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, obviously, you know, what happened, unfortunately happened and uh, yeah, missed the boy a lot, like really do miss him. He was a, he was a good kid. You were, you were on his list. I'm not even taking, like I was on the phone number and he thought I was just trying to butter him yeah. up. But I'm like, no, no, you were actually on Chrissy's list. So Chrissy had like a, a hit list is the wrong terminology. But you know, we said, because we, but, you know, what, like, what, like we, when we were banging them out one a week, we were like, who are we going to get, who are we going to get? And we like wrote this list and um, I'm not shitting you. You were firmly on that list. So yeah, thank you so, so much. You know what I mean? And That's it, cool. I mean, geez, it's, a, it's an honour to be here. It's a chase and a race and, um, the last time I saw this was, was the London Bike Show. Rory Skinner and my, myself were, were hanging about getting getting pictures taken in these very seats. It's proper cool. And I think you're really good at this, by the way. You know, I was... I oh, was thank you. Yeah. As I was sitting there quietly saying nothing. <laughs> That's why I'm good at it. You know? <laughs> when, when I heard that Grace and Dom were going to carry on and, and going to continue, I thought, well, who, who are they going to get? They're going to get you. I thought, wow. That's brilliant, you know. And I, I didn't know how you'd get on. It was going to be interesting to watch, but you're really good at it. Well, I mean, just really see, just nice. seeing the progression of uh, like Grace is the main the main woman, and she she's the the go to. But yeah, I think as co hosts that we have the three co hosts that we have, we're all very fortunate to be able to help out and try and carry on. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, it's it's. I, I find it nerve wracking because it's not it's not my. I was thing. shit myself. You know that I really was. I was coming to the car again, thinking, "Oh my god, don't make don't make an arse of yourself. Don't talk too much. Be polite. Don't be too Scottish. Don't be too fifey. Don't be don't, too, don't Scottish. be too argumentative. Hold on, try and be fifey. What's a fifey? Aye, all right, pal. All right, pal. All right, pal. He's a he's a biscuit. <laughs> You know, and I just thought because this There's is the a, episode title, Fifey. Gives a biscuit. <laughs> it's, it's a big podcast, you know, and to come on it with you guys is like I was I was quite nervous. So it's it's nice to know that you're nervous as well about <laughs> the whole thing. A couple of beads of sweat in the back of the head's cool, but um, I'll tell you what, it's it's amazing because we're gonna go like to your main point. It's amazing how everything comes full circle because like Christian invited Chrissy and Paul Bird mm-hmm. to your wedding and then it was actually like uh, Paul had a couple of drinks and Chrissy talked him into it and went yeah. go on then and then and now, and now we're here yeah. and we're going to just like talk about Paul yeah. Bird you know it's it's 
the scary circle this life, isn't it? You know yeah, what I mean? it has like seven degrees of separation and all that. And people talk about, you know, great people being involved in bike race. And I mean, I, I think the BSB was uh, was lucky to have Birdie around, you know, yourself as well, Christian, you, you rode for him. You were one of his, one of his riders. And it was just, uh, it was it was such a sad, sad thing. It, it happened so quickly. Um, I last texted him after the Cadwell Park event on the Monday, heading back up the road, and um, and then the news came through on the Friday. It was just like it was, it just stopped me dead in my tracks. Um, he looked after me at weekends. I'm so lucky. Um, I would go, you know, I'll travel down, and and Buddy says you're part of the team. You come and you eat here, and you get fed, and and even to the fact that uh, Vicky uh, helps helps me my accommodation, helps book my accommodation. So I move about with them, but um, yeah, um, with Frank and Jordan taking <coughs> over, I think they're, I really think they're, they've, they've had a very, very difficult year to, and a very difficult situation to, to try and pick up of all the, the years for this to happen. The, the boys have won two, there's aggro, they're going for a championship. Um, I think Frank and Jordan have been, have been sensational about it, but uh I miss I miss Paul, you know. I really miss him. I keep expecting to see him walking up the stairs in their hospitality unit, expecting to see him walking about in the, the back shot of the garage or something like that. But um, it's it's just it's one of these things. It's it's a sad fact of life that it does unfortunately come to us all. But uh, I actually reached out to Fred after the Alton Park thing where we're all standing on the grid. Actually, yeah. actually, it's a, really one of the only times I've had communication with Fred. I sent him an email just saying, you know, well done. I thought what you, the words you said were really, really good, yeah. and I thought it was really good. And he replied back with a nice, nice long email as as, as Fred would. And I thought that was, I was quite. I thought it was the right thing to do because that wasn't an easy gig. No, you know, Stuart didn't speak to me about it or like he told us what was happening, but he didn't. He thought it was probably too close for you guys to be involved in. So you know, we'll we'll get Fred to do it. And I think what Fred did was fabulous. And the, yeah. the introduction that Stuart did at the start of it, the montage on the wall, Alton Park, and yeah, so it was a tough weekend. It's a tough weekend, and uh, he'll be he'll be missed for you'll be missed forever. You know, so, yeah. it's it's one of these things. That the the PBM team will tr- will move on. I believe from what I'm hearing with, with Frank and Jordan, they're gonna they're gonna dig deep and they're gonna gonna roll on with it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I mean, Birdie was great to me for so so many years. You know, um, going back a long long way. It's just um, I was very grateful to him and the Bird family for kind of not just feeding me, but just you know be, let me be involved in things like that as well. I, I'm not sure that many people actually realise the sort of little things that they did for people. You know, like feeding you. I know yeah. that they sort of they even they fed Brad Perry this year yeah, just to yeah. because they could. Yeah. You know, people that need a bit of a, a leg up or a bit yeah, of Carl a Harris bit of, is in there as well. Or, Carl, you know, you all know. all the <clears throat> and it was never sort of shouted about. You know, Birdie did do a lot of things for. You know, he he basically helped run the air ambulance from yeah his, his place yeah from his place, yeah. and he would fund how that ran from his place. You know, give them a, a, a bolt, helipad yeah, and bolt, let them you know bolt, yeah, yeah. put fuel in it and do whatever yeah. was done. And those sort of things weren't shouted about. And I I do sort of almost appreciate the things that aren't shouted about. Cause he wasn't yeah. doing it for adoration or admiration yeah. or any any. It was just to be. Good. Just to be a nice person. Because yeah. because he often did have a sort of a bad boy image at certain times, and that. But there was a lot of very good things that he did, and yes, yes, yeah. it's, 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 it's very all, sad. I always thought he was very <clears throat> rude and very good at rider choice. To tell you the truth, me you too. Know, I, I tell you what, and that rub that literally rubbed off perfectly with Jordan, and yeah. she said the words, "You have to earn the right to be a poor yeah. bird rider," and yeah. he thought, you know, far beyond a years is Jordan that. Yeah, that she. Oh, what a woman! I listened to that podcast uh, in a plane going to Gatwick. Actually, it doesn't she for, speak incredibly well? Oh yeah, so good. <laughs> She's twenty four. How is like incredible? She just she is an incredible woman, yeah. and it's like what like wow! I can't even get the words out no, of how talented, incredible she is. Talented, she is. He was always a good 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 judge of riding character. He was um, you know like the year that Hizzy won the championship, but then then Hizzy didn't ride from next year, and I thought, well, that's a bit harsh. But then you know he brought. Did you not bring in Shaky? And then was it Shaky? Or oh, I can't remember who he brought in after that. But you know, it was always apart from Sean Emmett when he was. He always he always used to go in and have a moan about. Um, but always a very very good judge of judge of right. I mean, Christian, he signed you, you know. So he, he everyone was, makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. He let me go as well. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you had two years out of it, did you? Know? I did, yeah, yeah. You had two years. 
I've <laughs> blagged it, blagged it two years out of it. The best thing is I'm going to get booed by every Christian. <laughs> you didn't fart on chairs in their ears. This is the biggest piss take show in the, in, in, in the world. Going, by the way, we're not being rude. The no, we've got, you know, we're looking at, we're looking looking at Patreon No, 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 questions. no. So we're getting, again, Grace obviously puts everything out on the Patreon system and they, everyone gets a chance to As ask usual, you I think we've gone through most of them. Ask me a question. But I've just found a really good one. I like this one. I'm going to go straight to it. And we will obviously... I bet you've nicked... Go on then. I bet you've nicked... Go on then. I bet you've nicked... Go on then. Go on then. Go on then. Go on then. So, Dawn has asked... You but <laughs> Was it the same one? <laughs> it's like Dawn... Dawn Hem- Hammersley. Yeah. Is that right? You can ask it then. No, no, no. You ask it. Go for it. You Who has been Duncan's favourite and worst guest in the commentary suite? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, that's a bit harsh. It's good on it. It's favourite and worst guest. Favourite guest. Troy Corso was in it. Uh, uh, oh uh, yeah, that was cool, wasn't it? In the BMW Troy Corso. Corso was... I'm going to call him out now. He promised to come on this show and he didn't. Oh, and I sat him up twice in the assignment. Sat him up twice. Mate, I did a. Is that why he didn't come on the no, no, show? No, no, no. He did, mate. He doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> so I'm mate, up facing out that. Yeah. Mate, mate, I'm telling you now. I just went. Did yeah, you beat him twice? Like a drum son. The just world like, super bike champion Troy Corso. Yep. <laughs> You, yeah, you got some stuff. Did you no. him? Oh, he did, twice. Didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he almost fell off in the first one where uh, young Thomas Rudick had him going through Druids and drove into the no. side of him. Um, you know, anyway, what's Troy, the worst? Probably Troy Corsa would be one of the best guests. I, I thought he was going to go worse. No, no, star, starstruck with that. Um, worst guess, I don't know, because everybody that comes up really good. Um, to say that somebody's not good at doing to, to come through that commentary box door and put a headset on and do a bit of talking isn't an easy gig he's brilliant um, isn't he? fin- Finlay Arsco was hilarious when he came in the first time he came at the commentary box Alton Park junior super stock grader put the headset on him and he squeaked seven words that's all I got out of him seven squeaky little words and he took the headset off put it down and just just, just watch but he, he then came back up at Brands Hatch and he was much much better so uh, he, he was funny and his mum his mum gave him a bit of a hard time for it as well who wouldn't you put in front of the mic out of Fear of Gordon, like I think you in the mic, didn't I? I think you in front of the mic. No, mate, I went. Hey, I turned up to be quiet, and you asked me a question. I'm like, oh, shit, Tommy's always a Tommy's always a bit of a, a um, <laughs> he's know, Tommy, isn't he? You know yeah, what I mean? Swear jar. You need to have some sort of beatbox. Well, beat it, just following on from that, so Murray has asked, "What's Duncan said during commentary that's got him the most bother?" Oh, yes. Um, that is the best name that, ever, Murray. Murray Smoker. Murray Smoker. What's he smoking? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what's got me in trouble? Good um, question, isn't it? Not in BSB. It was it was at Knock Hill um, in my early junior days of commentary. Um, there was an Irish Formula Four Championship over racing, and I interviewed the guy who had won the race, <laughs> and. Uh, I was new to it, so I didn't really know. And the other guys not killed me and giving me a bit of a, oh, you know, you got to try and be, be funny and whatever else. Was, okay, so you rise to the bait. But I was interviewing the guy and he goes, oh, I was a bit um, pissed off after qualifying. And I said, whoa, 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 you're live on the radio, you can't say cock or bugger. And that came out <laughs> in, a, in a whole kind of world of like... <laughs> <laughs> and then said, and, and then, then what was that off? Was that that your no, what was yeah, that? Yeah, it was, that was a, I think it was a young ones or something. Was no, something no, no, like no. That. What's, what's the orange face bloke? Uh, Tango. Uh, fa- was it Fast Show? Nah, I don't know. But no, it's later than that. It was Alan Brunt that told, <laughs> had mentioned it to me. And I thought, oh, that's mega. I'm going to use that. It's, it's that line you, you're live on Channel 4, you can't say cock or bugger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I said cock or bugger. <laughs> and the boy apologised for saying the word pissed off. And then I passed back to the commentary box radio with Gary Stagg and Dr. Robert Johnson there. And all I heard was. <laughs> 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 and then Robert tried to say a sentence, couldn't, and then handed back to me. And I, I didn't think it was that bad or that funny, but uh, yeah, that that got me in a bit of a sticky situation at Knock Hill. I'm very reserved in the BSB. I think I do. I don't say too many things that are bad. I I, I, I tried to say something about Luke Moss at the end of the year, and I tried, and it came out completely wrong. And then John Jameson came up and I had a quick word to me. Goes just to let you know I had a complaint. I was like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. I'll remedy it later on. So. I was going to say, have you ever sort of unintentionally yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. upset a rider by asking a question that didn't come out quite right yeah I, I, I upset a sponsor for the, the tactics uh, BMW team and I, I apologise for that I didn't mean to come out the way it came out but it came out totally wrong and what was it? Ah, oh, just uh, Luke Mossy was saying he wants another year uh, with a good bike and a good team and to, to really show himself. 
and I said, put the boy in a good right environment, and that's where we go. But it came out totally wrong. And I'm not, I'm not saying that he was in the wrong team. Nah. Because no. Christ Almighty, the guy got in the podium with that yeah. team this year. It's just a tiny little operation. I think you did all right there. I think I, you're okay. I, I, and it just it came it came out and over wrong. So it's not like you went, well, they're shite. <laughs> no, no. You, know what I mean? you don't no. want to be there again. No. No. Literally no. whispering in the mic with your hand up going, yeah, get away from me. Oh, no, no. So <laughs> I can understand if you said that. By the way, you... just that was really cool to see Luke Mossy back on a podium. Oh, wasn't it just? I had Luke Staple for commentating. Oh, there you go. There's a guy you don't want in the commentary box, by the way. Looks to you I asked him a question and he nodded. I said, you're on radio, you can't fucking nod. <laughs> and he had his stunt double with him, you know, Terry, the boy that looks like him. You notice that they're like, like a bat. If you, if you squint, it's like you've got double vision. <laughs> so, um, but they were getting so excited that Mossy was going to get on the podium. And uh, eventually, uh, after the race, I called the first year across the line. He just said to me, without closing the mic, I'm going to head down to the park fairway and just threw his headset on the ground and a big bang on the microphone and he ran away. That oh my class, God, man. look. You've got, to so. keep, you've got to keep it raw. And I tell, you, hey, I tell you what, going through all these, these are at, like, Tony, fantastic question. Oh, here we go. Cyril. Our oh, mate, Cyril. You've got an extra page than me. I haven't got a Cyril. Oh, I've got a Cyril. Was it Shirley? Shirley Bimson. Yeah, I've got Shirley's page. Th- they are. Here we go. Cyril. Wild Cyril. Hi, Cyril. Oh, Hi. sorry. <laughs> I completely missed what you were on about then. I was like looking for a Cyril. She, she's literally... She's <laughs> yeah. actually looking for a Cyril. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was going, I haven't got a Cyril. Oh, right, so there's not a Cyril. Sh- no, no, no. no, no. Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Shirley has... Here, like, she's a super fan. She's magnet. Right, she's got the tattoo of Christian... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. The first time I met her, that, that did scare me. I've um, got to admit, but now I'm totally used to it. Cool. She loves it. Cool. Yeah, no, she loves it. She loves it. She loves Like, we're okay. And what is it? Oh. Do, uh, do you know what? The weirdest thing, and this is a really <laughs> strange thing. He's my light and wears me bald. <laughs> so, this happened at me at Brands Hatch, and I don't know if this person's still around, but we were, I was in the stock paddock with a mate of mine, and then this lady came up with her son, who looked about, I don't know, let's say 10 years old, and she was like, ah, oh, blah, blah, crack on. You might, you might have seen me. My name's Tiger Bum on Facebook. Wow. And I was like, all right. I, I, no, but okay. <laughs> she went, yeah. Do you want to know why? I was like, and before I'd said no, she turned around oh, no. and whipped her kex down and bent right over. And literally she had a tiger on her bum. And it was full growler. <laughs> <laughs> And I stood there with the whole of all my mates in the, in in their tent and Nicola and everyone. <laughs> were like, was that youth club? Yeah, youth club. Oh, oh, I can't imagine that going down well. Well, it was it, that would have been the funniest night what? ever. But we were all just all we were that shocked by what went on. So that's just strange. Many that's women strange tattoo stuff. No, that's, the, the, that's really... the first and the last, but that was Tiger Bomb. So. By the way, sorry for interrupting your interview, but can you briefly give a shout out to the youth club? Uh, Christian's a, yeah. no, Christian is a part of an elite Illuminati group mm-hmm. of riders mm-hmm. right, right in the paddock, and it's called Youth Club. Right. It stemmed from Supermoto days, yeah. and you've got to be in a click, within a click, within a click. Yeah. How and do we get in? We yeah, can't, mate. No, mate, mate, mate. Yeah. It's just, it's no, 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 no. It's, the, you it, can, it you can, can't happen because I don't even know the entry requirements. Mate, is this a group chat? No, 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 no. It doesn't exist. There's a group chat. There's no recording of this. You have to be a part of Youth Club to be a part of Youth Club. No. And what's the first rule about Youth Club? No one knows. I don't even know. You've started sort of sowing the seed No, 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 no. I've gone in asking for actual riding advice, and there's just, there is. Yeah, so Dom has been racing against one of the main members of Youth Club, which is Rob. McNeely. Who is, oh, Rob McNeely. He is so funny. So Put it on Paul for Mc, the last race. He is BMW. full Miley Cyrus. He is wrecking ball everywhere. <laughs> Isn't he? Like, he's so funny, Rob. You know, I've met, never he met Rob. He can go from row five to Paul I've, before the lights go out. I've never met Rob and I'd like to meet Rob. <laughs> <laughs> and I've watched him race. We'll have to send him. Is, is he doing do. F9 next year? I think so. I don't, well, I don't know, but yeah. Put him in the box. I watched yeah. him race last last year in Stock Thigh and I thought he'd done really well, but last the last I saw him, he crashed going through Surtees and that was the oh, stock. Oh, yeah, he had a... Yeah, yeah, that was stock. And then he arrived in the BMW. Bless him, he's not built for the BMW, is he? He's quite a, he's quite a, <laughs> well, he's a tall got, guy. He's, he's, he's a very right. tall guy yeah. and he's, he's got a bit of... He's got a lot of a bad back. And but see if it's wet. He's so fast. McNeely Brown BMW, yeah. all the way. And it, do you know what's the best thing about Rob is so he's on this... The BMWs aren't the most powerful things, are they, Dom? No. And he can't get tucked in because of no. his stature, but also he's got a really bad back. Uh-huh. So he does this thing, right, where he, he get his him getting tucked in is him bowing his head. But you know like how when you know how like when a duck walks, their head moves. <laughs> well Rob has the same thing, but the other way around. So when his head goes down, his legs go out. So it actually becomes less aerodynamic. <laughs> 
because these two knees just stick out. So if anyone wants to watch and cheer for Rob McNeely, who is the main member of U Club, then just see the guy whose knees are sticking out. You can't miss him. He's bright orange as well. <laughs> yeah. The best thing is, I was going to tell you where you could find him, but I don't want to disclose no, the, the information no, of the U Club. It's... it's it... Can't be, it can't be known. You can find him at the exit of certain corners sometimes during a race. <laughs> no, but the mad thing, if he's Walking got a bad... Away. I'll tell you what, if he's a bad... But he, he pedals, mine. He absolutely pedals. But I'll tell you what, we're going to have to quickly go through the rest of these. So I've got... So Bullock Baz has asked a few, but then at the end... Bullock. Duncan, what's your commentary box biscuit of choice, seen as it's very on point? We've got a huge choice of biscuits here. Bourbon or custard cream? I mean, he's, had, he's narrowed it down for you already. Uh, tonics, caramel wafer. I had one of them today. I was on a, yeah. I was on a um, dark chocolate one. Then. I was on a Logan Air flight. Mm. Were you? Clearly, that's a okay. thing. A Scottish, yeah. Where are we heading? Southampton. Ah, from Ca- where? Newcastle. Ah, okay, lovely. It's sorry, tonics come away for bourbon custard cream. I need something that's been wrapped in foil. You're at all, you. <laughs> okay. You is that, is that a, bus? Um... <laughs> You don't, you don't know who's fingered your biscuit if it's out in the open, you know. That's true. So, I'm a bit protected. He did hand me a biscuit before. I feel a little bit violated here. <laughs> I didn't did even ask Cyril's question. I've just realised oh, yeah. that. So, Sorry. Apart from... Uh, da, 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 hi, apart from any motorsport in there... Oh, God. Is yeah, there? Anyway, is there? Go on. I'll tell you what. No, you, no, ask, carry on. you ask Cyril's. I'm, my brain's not working at all here. Obviously, you've done you've done world endurance mm-hmm. cars. Is there any other sport you would like to commentate on? Indianapolis 500. Or the Daytona 500. Indianapolis 500 in the pits. Is that because you can Indica. see the whole track? <laughs> uh, I just, I just, I just, I'd love to go Indianapolis. Um, yeah, um, I suppose MotoGP would be pretty cool. World Superbike would be cool. Formula One would be pretty cool. Formula Two. Is, is Formula there a chance? Is there a chance to MotoGP through BS? Did they take BSB Radio to the MotoGP? Events, no, they, or do they have their own. Yeah, thing? They, they, no, they pick up the TV. They use the TV feed. They oh, use the, the right. TNT or what used to be BT Sport. Okay, and they play uh, Hodgie and Gavin the circuit. Is there any chance we could talk you in a moped mayhem? I'm trying to talk him into joining <laughs> the chase and the racing team. Could I not? I'm provided the money for this. Could I ride? Is it New Year's Eve? Did you say it's oh, the day before yeah. New Year's Eve? Okay, is now. that even a thing? Yeah, it is. What's yeah. that then? Hogmanay. Ho- See, I knew it was a thing. T said moped mayhem. You commentating on that? It's full race. of BS. It's full, even better. Come that join our team. Pretty cool, isn't Come it? join our team. I yeah, love it. I think, cool. I think we've pretty much gone through the rest. You know, like we've had David we've talk about the sport. David Young talks about the sport bike class. Talented young riders coming through. We've completely done that one. Um, Jess asked what I'm doing next season. I'm not going to go into that because it's just adding to the suspense. Audrey, I've heard what is Dominic Audrey. doing? Selling his TT race bike? Yeah, what's that all about? I'm skin, mate. Okay. <laughs> That's fair play. <laughs> I want a Honda. Ah, do you? <laughs> but they're just faster. Yeah, okay. Are you going to do the roads next year? Oh, mate, I, I yeah. live... Mate, uh, mate. 130.274 miles per hour, Dom Herbertson. He is that good at his job. I Even I forget the point two bit. That fair yeah. play. So and that no, is a bit different. I tell you, like, yet again, anyway, I keep... Refi- I, I want to shake your hand on no. that. Thank well you, done. Thank you very Impressive. much. Impressive. Um, I, I like Christian down though because I keep like yet again we had like Christian was always a sounding joke. Down. Yeah, I let him down. I, like he were, he was a kind of sounding joke for a while solely because he always said, "Am I just another co-host?" Because we did like oh yeah four right. or five episodes of me yeah. and Chrissy, and they were always great cracking that. And we got talking about just before the TV, and he says, "Well, you know, if you like, we got talking about the the one thirty element." I said once you do one, you'll do loads, and unfortunately, I did a one thirty lap. In the first lap of the senior race yeah. on the app, like stand start lap, just off a went, and then <laughs> the clutch went, didn't it? I was absolutely <laughs> devastated. So I did, I did more than one for you, mate, more than one. So fair that, that, honestly, fair play. It, mate, Super I was got, not, like, stand start though. I was like, it's it was just, incredible. Just, Dom, I've, been, I've been there and I've watched it, and it's it's, well, uh, 20, it's not for me, but I'm down, it scares the absolute shit at me, but I love it. <laughs> this is a weird thing, but uh, uh, you know I can't I can't miss it. I used to imagine, I used to love the Manx Radio. I have to. I'm one of these traditionalists. They do an awesome job uh, with that, don't they? I, 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 I like the new style thing, the live. But I used to like having the start line up to Dave Christian, Glenn Helen, and then Roy Moore at Ramsey, and then back back down. <laughs> and I, I miss I miss that. I used to walk about with my headset on in a daze, cutting the grass, listening to I, it, and uh, that was from practice session one to the end of the senior. And I, I kind of miss that a little bit. It's yeah. almost it's almost like I see a little bit too much on the TT TT live, uh, and I prefer it to be a little bit. It's there. But it's not there, you know, and it, I know it's there, but I need to go and find it to listen to it. I'm a traditionalist. Dave Christian was brilliant oh, at cool. Glen Helen. I, I'm a traditionalist as well, but in the same breath, in order for the sports to oh, survive, it's got to be done. Yeah. But I totally agree with you. It's yeah. almost like listening to the radio, the next thing you should do is get on the board. Yeah. 
and go. I'd you know love what I mean? to have it's a short like commentator, that. actually. I think it'd be oh, pretty cool be to commentate. I'd love that. I'm an anorak at TT stuff. out there in the world now. That's it. I'm a bit of an anorak at TT. The amount of things that have started from this trailer. What, rumours, <laughs> marriages, divorces. He's, like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's on the phone to Tim Martin now trying to sort out his contract now. <laughs> hey, look, yeah, the people who have my, my favourite bloke, Jess, has asked... <laughs> Who's a dude? It's a standing joke. <laughs> Jess is a guy. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I don't He'll think... Come see I, you now. I don't actually think that there's um, one here, but have you ever let something slip during commentary as you must get good access to the guys throughout the year? So have you said something that you shouldn't have done? Um, Someone's told you in confidence and you've gone, whoopsie! Um, y- yes, and I can't remember what it was, but it was something about somebody riding someplace. And uh, <laughs> um, it, was, it was this year. You made the announcement. Yeah, yeah, I kind of made the announcement. Although it was kind of already kind of common knowledge. You know, what the hell was it? I can't remember... But yeah, um, but I'm, I, I do. I, I'm very respectful for what you guys do in the garage, and anything you tell me, um, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to go and say it on air. Mm-hmm. If, if Christian says, "Big fucking pile of shit," I can't do this and that and that. I'll say, "Well, Christian's maybe not the best of session, but he wants to make. He's going to make it work in, in session two. I'll always kind of I've edit what you guys say to me. I'm very respectful of any little rumors that I hear. Uh, or anything that team bosses do tell me, um, because you, you don't want to burn your bridge. Oh, you don't want to you don't want to shoot yourself. In the, you know, mm-hmm. you, you don't want to do that because if you if somebody tells you something in confidence and then you go and blurt it out over the airwaves, yeah, I guess, to, I guess you'd, only, you'd only do it a few times, wouldn't you? And then yeah, nobody, nobody's going to talk to you or yeah. tell you anything. So I'm lucky. I got on so great with Harv. Uh, uh, Birdie was great. Johnny Moat, uh, Darren and Nigel, your boss. Um, even in the McCams garage, I'll, I'm getting better with. I'm just learning the guys at OMG, and I really like them. The talent in that garage, when you actually stand back and look at it, the riders, Paul Curran, Tommy Hill, you know, Roger Marshall, bloody Nora, and Hillier in the middle, and Casey O'Gorman. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah, you never mentioned Casey in the... I know, uh, I forgot. Because I forgot. Well, well I know, there's that many, but... He's, Casey's, he, yeah. We're, we're going to have to quickly talk about it, but Casey jumped on the Super Sport bike for the last... He was on the path. You know he was on the path of bike on the Friday night. I had heard rumours yeah. that he was... I'd, I'd actually spoke to someone who'd said, yeah, we're thinking of putting him on a pathway bike. And then mm-hmm. I think they gave him the chance to ride it, didn't they? Yeah. Because right. uh, interview student the Pitlane Institute says he's got special dispensation from um, ACU or, or whatever yeah. it was because so, he's so young to get on that. And he went past the Pitlane like, fuck it, yeah. And I thought, wow, okay. He's, he seems, seems at home at that. Uh, but he is a, he is a talent. Because they first got him and they stuck him in the... the Super stock junior super stock bike, yeah. and he was, yeah, but he never yeah. actually got the race because he crashed and he got crashed into the warm up. Yeah, got crashed into it. He had an incident with uh, Jacob Hatch and Finlay Arscott, <coughs> yeah, and down down they went. Uh, so he never raced it, and then he came to Cadwell Park and he was actually in a super sport bike, wasn't he? And he fired himself with the moon through the top of the gooseneck, mm-hmm. so he was a bit sore and battered and bruised there. But then we saw him going, and uh, he's he's and he one scored to watch. a podium, didn't he? Yeah, he's 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 one to watch, big time one to watch, and he's also kind of got that kind of. Has he got a dual nationality or not? So, you know, where, where's, is he actually Irish or is he British? There's that there's that kind of thing where he might actually be from... Wait, you say that about the Mackenzies. No, you can't. <laughs> no, they're not Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking with you, man. Well, they're Scottish, but they're, mo- they're more English than us, man. No, they're not. Who, where's, where's Andy Murray from? Sterling. Scotland. Dumbledore, no. yeah. Is he British or Scottish? I didn't want he's Scottish. <laughs> Always depends how he's done, doesn't it, really? And, yeah, when he wins, when he wins, he's British, and when he loses, he's Scottish. <laughs> I do know that. Tell you about that. This question's popped in my head. Is it the Mackenzie's at all knock hill circuit? No. Yeah. No, no. They had, did they have uh, involvement in it? Or? No, Neil was just a, a Neil was a, a loyal yeah. supporter of Knock Hill who um, rides, has track days here, which I think you've maybe instructed on. But yeah. it's it's uh, it's owned by Gillian Shedden. Uh, used to be in the Butcher family, Derek Butcher, but Gillian is Derek's daughter. She married Gordon Shedden, who uh-huh. I'm pretty sure you know. Gordon's keen biker, triple British touring car driver, pretty good guy all round. Cool guy. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's 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 operated by uh, by Gillian. She's like the the MD, the boss. There we she are. must be obeyed. Another another woman that I have to get <laughs> say yes to in life. The other one's back home in Glenrothes. Hi, Angela. <laughs> thank you for letting me come on the show. Yeah, thank Honestly, you. thank you so much for going on the show. But I think we need to do a bit more. Well, thank you, first of all. Thank you for all them questions from the Patreons who are absolutely... But Aaron Jeffs, all the way from the Isle of Man, has come up with a very, very valid point. Oh. This is the 200th episode. Shit off, really? Is it? Oh, we should have had some them you should, some, you should have some better ones that we can see. Yeah. Yeah. That is totally... Where's the brass band? Mate, we're, we're... I want a budget here, so... <laughs> that's actually very, that's that was actually really very I, good. I, I think that's yeah. a Mexican Coca Cola. That is that, so. pretty amazing. That is very Mate, amazing. That, that's well, just... I saw that Nicolo Canapa was one nine nine. 
And I thought, I'll never be 200. I'll have somebody really good on for 200. No, They're not going to have me on. Hey, that is. Right, one last thing I've got to say. You guys are both racers. You're both on Facebook, yeah? You do Facebook. Kind of. Kind of. I know you do. You do it under a false pseudonym. Is that a thing? Is that how I said it right? <laughs> you do it under a different name. Small Wheelie Club. We've got to mention that, right? Yeah, what the yeah, what's all small this? Small yeah, Wheelie Club is a, a group on Facebook that you need to get involved in. If you've got something smaller than an inch, which I believe you have, and I know you have, according to Nicola, if you've got Build it, a pram. just a little bit of daily under that wheel, you've got to get it on the Small Wheelie Club. So is that a group on Facebook? It's a, it's a group, yeah. And you have to submit your post and you find it if you're worthy <laughs> or not. Some big hitters on there in the British Championship paddock already. I've submitted my own photograph where you could just slide a credit card underneath the front wheel of my ZX6R coming here, but not kilts. Mega. So there yeah, you go. That sounds actually. There was. Uh, you're actually uh, rake, you're breaking cool, through this. Just, there is some actually good, like this, like rate my plate is a great. Facebook it's one group, of the good those groups. sort of things. But just just going off the drown and duck for me. Just going off the wheelie thing. What? Oh no, you can Google it. <laughs> just going off the wheelie thing. There was a few years ago, Paula Spargo did put up a Willy Wednesday. Willy. <laughs> Like a talk show. <laughs> it wasn't. A DP. It was just a poorly, oh my, <laughs> poorly spelt wheelie Wednesday. <laughs> I, I need to try and f- I need to find my my. Ah, uh, fuck it, forget it. We'll show you that. Later. Either that or it was in his flipping recently written things. So there you go. Write that down your book. Small wheelie club. S W C. Love it. Wheelie. Right. Absolutely. W H. <laughs> Wheelie, 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 wheelie. wheelie. <laughs> S W H. Like sisters with voices. S W V. Remember them. What? Small wheelie club. Sorry, you've got no, no, no. no. I, all I'm thinking, I'm just looking at this going. Grace is gonna kill us. That she's gonna edit this before she goes away. She's God, no, right here. She said, "I know, no, no but she's still gonna kill us." Neither, yeah. With those curling irons, just straight in here. But uh, no, two hundred episodes. I can't believe that. That is, yeah, that's big, big congratulations to you. Yeah, well no, 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 Chris, no, 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 Chris, Grace, no, 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 the, ra- the that that family. Congratulations! That, that, it's not, I have fact, nothing to do with it. But no, no, amazing. don't be. Da- it, that no, is no, incredible. That is nuts. I feel like I've laid down. How many hours? How many hours is that? Of <laughs> it's just like, but the mad thing, like we're joking, like we're joking apart. It's like it's what people don't see with the the hour of hours. It's like it's like that was one of my main questions to you. Was like how much do you prepare? Yeah. For what people see, of well, arguably it's totally different for you. It's like seven hours worth yeah. of graph, but then you think of the preparation that goes yeah, into but it. It's I like, also take the result sheets away with me as well. Mm. You know. No, but that's what and I mean. I'll look at your points, lap times, and but like there's us chatting away for two, like you know. Two and a half hours nearly, and Chrissy always loved the the long format yeah. of the conversations. You know what I mean? He could get really into the into the the nooks and crannies of the any conversation, and Chrissy's always brought that forward. Yeah. And but Grace, God love it, has been editing these. Like Chrissy always did the audio files, and then Grace has just taken this all on. And that is a very good point. Part of the house, uh, like the house cleaning side of things. Grace has actually had to restart the Instagram page. Now, yes. She, like, when Grace got in charge of the Instagram element, we had four or 5,000. So, mm-hmm. like, me and Chrissy would put the odd thing. Mainly Chrissy. It was actually majorly Chrissy putting the feed up. But then when Grace took it over, she got it up to nearly 80,000. Brilliant, isn't it? And that was... Yeah. That was 100% natural on that side of things. That was just hard work. It's not graph. buying followers yet. No, no. Like, yeah. Honestly, that was just full... All just hard that, a graph. That's there. testament to the, the the product that you guys do. People want to be involved in it because it's so bloody good. Oh, but like the mat, like what people and do... Grace does, you know, what, oh, what she does behind the scenes. Just, she's just she's a rouse. It just, <laughs> you know what I mean. Her, like her and Chrissy are just uh, like symmetrical in that side of things. And but like, please, please, if you get a moment. Go follow it. So it's under the the tagline. Please tell me I'm gonna get this right. She'll put it under the yeah, the feed anyway. Yeah. So it's chasing the chasing the race and pod. This one. So it's not fake. It's not. It's this is the the new legit version of it. Yeah, we got. We basically got done over. We got totally got done over. And what? So if you do get anything from the old one, it's yeah. not us. It's it is definitely not us. And <clears throat> in fact, go and unfollow the old one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. While you do, yeah, just swap that over and do yeah, follow the new one. But it's incredible. There you are. Yeah. So chasing the racing pod. Yeah. Four, like, we've got four posts at the moment. Grace has put four we're out are, there. We're already up to uh, two thousand and seventy nine. Cool. And that's people not knowing. People yeah. are people being cautious about it. But like Grace is just what, well, <laughs> like you know when when. <laughs> Oh, that is class. <laughs> that is class. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> and there's and there's Duncan having a right giggle looking at it. But um, no, like two two hundred episodes. It's like it's it's pretty poetic, and the fact of like new 
a new chapter, a new start. Mm. You know, we've got a new sponsor on board and that new sponsor, hence wearing, you know, their fantastic hoodie here is um, Alan Garner and the OMG team have stepped up to the plate yeah. and Alan and everything that he's going through, you know, with his own health battles yeah. as well as running his own team is said, look, he wants the pod to continue and he has stepped up to the main tier of the sponsorship element, which is absolutely fantastic because without this, it just simply wouldn't happen. It wouldn't it wouldn't be covering Grace's yeah. time, the, the editing software. People just see the... What, they what's the that finished now? product. They just see the yeah. finished product. They don't you know? see what goes on behind all these these little parts. You have to make sure they're perfect. Hey, without getting too mental about it, but like literally Grace is a swan. You know, you see the elegant <laughs> yeah. top, you know, the calm water and everything. She is paddling like fuck underneath. You know, like it, people do not see the hard work. And Alan is kindly stepped up to that plate to keep the show on the go. Good. And that's only... Even that is a small part. It's a major. It's a major part of what Alan is covering. So he's going to be up on the boards. He's going to be up on the side of the vans. He's going to get the maximum coverage that we can deliver on the show. What happens? Does Christian have to be on an OMG top? That could be a bit of an issue. <laughs> no, no, Mark Train. It's, it's all quick. Mark Train, OMG. It's a done deal. I came, I came with a package. Yeah. <laughs> no, we just we just didn't quite get the uh, the graphics at the moment to get him um, slapped on. So heads wearing the hoodie. But... And Grace has offered me a, a little bit of your fabulous quick shift of coffee to take a road as well yep so they've rebranded on that side of things so please follow quick shifter as well but we were sniffing it before you're supposed to drink it but we were sniffing literally it. there's a bag so down good. here like it was just it, it, <laughs> so that's good. a different for a different episode <laughs> but, but there's more sponsorship packages avail- available in there is basically what we're you know, yeah, yeah. We're, it's, it's undergoing quite a bit of a change isn't it here massively massively so like on the board behind us so what we're going to do is we're like, a, like a tier system so alan is kindly filled he's going to be filling the top side of that tier system so he'll be at the top and then on the side obviously bennett's have stepped up as well you know they've kind of come on board on a heavier element to try and yeah, keep the good, show going good. we've got the patrons the more patrons we have the better the quality the more we can deliver like especially on the vlog side of things but you know we've got a potential we have a gap not ah. even a potential cut. We have another cut. you're tapping me for sponsorship. That's right? it. That's it. Yeah. Get your we'll one out. Fiber so. for you. <laughs> but like, we're going to start yeah. doing individual pod sponsors. Oh, that's at this a good point, move, yeah. Going into it. So, you know, if people want to come on board for one particular episode, please get in touch. And I fully assure you, you will not be speaking to me. You'll be speaking to Chris. <laughs> like, if anyone's off put by having a deal with me, I'm assuring you it won't be. It is. This is like... So it would be, this is the, the Duncan Vincent podcast brought to you by OMG, Quick Shifter Coffee, Bennett's and somebody yeah, else. Exactly. Kawasaki Kyo. That's it. <laughs> so no, yeah, this one, they better get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, there's like, it's, without these people, I know I keep humming and drawing and going on about it, but without these sponsors, without people keeping us going, yeah. this just wouldn't exist. And we're up to 200. Chrissy's podcast is up to 200 episodes. And... This is great. And I said this when we all got together with the, the co-hosts and when this restarted up, this is up to Grace. This is Grace's pod and I will commit and Christian will commit and every, all our listeners, all our patrons, all our sponsors will commit to the same level that Grace Ross will. Yeah. So there's no reason whatsoever, no pressure, Grace, <laughs> but another 200 episodes. <laughs> but we are here yeah, do for it. you, Grace. And we're here on. for the Rouse family. And let's just keep the, keep the show on the road. I think we have a round of applause here for 200. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, Happy well days. There you go. I can't clap. Miss the finger properly. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But hey, <laughs> like I say, she's going to kill us. <laughs> one, one last thing she did want us to mention is that um, the pod will be at Motorcycle Live. Nice. Um, and we are going to try and get some tickets to also give out as a free. That was funny when you were having that conversation yet, with her earlier on. I was like, what, have, what, have you got tickets? She went, no, I'm not going. <laughs> and she went, it's like, not for you. Yeah, I didn't mean you. <laughs> It was funny. So, um, like, yeah. yeah, so um, most of the guys, I'm not. I will be there at some point as well. So um, I'm there the pod will be days. on the stand at some point over the week. Duncan will be there. Um, I think BSB Day is on the first s- Sunday. Is it first weekend? Is that the nineteenth? Yeah, that's the date I've been given. Nineteenth yeah. of November is when I think BSB. Check Day the is. check the motorcycle live website. Yeah, don't don't nice. take my yeah. word for it. Yeah, can I just say thank you very much? It's a proper honour to be down here. I was really nervous about this. I didn't want to. Like I say, cock it up, and it's been. Uh, ah, it's well, been you can't say cock. Yeah, I can't say cock it up. Oh, <laughs> 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 
So I just want to say thank you. It's cool. been great. Um, I'll make the drive home with my fajita so much better. Oh, look, my beautiful wife's phone in my right Where the hell are you? <laughs> you are dead, Vincent. You are so dead. You've got to leave that in, Grace, just to prove I was here. She'd be tracking me. <laughs> but thank you very much. You made me feel at home. Um, and it's you, you do a great job, so keep it going. Cheers, Duncan. Keep it going. No, thank you so much. And um, we'll catch everyone listening to this uh, another time. Yeah. See you in a bit. Bye. Peace and love. <laughs>